Hello everybody and welcome to another PMP end of month review. Well, what is this? Well, this is where we all get together for uh, an hour or so and a couple hours, however long it takes, <laughs> and we review all of these submissions into the PMP end of month review event. Why, what is the PMP? Well, that's Painters Motivating Painters, our Facebook hobby group that's all about helping you get to your next hobby step. So every month we invite our uh, folks to put in an entry into the end of month review event and we ask them to ask you know highlight something that they would like to uh, receive specific feedback on the project has to be finished and they have to ask for specific feedback as to what they need to uh, what they need to do or how they could improve or whatever the case so with that being said, if you'd like to join us on your hobby journey, and we welcome everybody from uh, people who are just starting out to masters, uh, we welcome you to join. The link is below. Uh, do make sure you answer all of the questions. If you don't answer all of the admission questions and agree to the terms of service for the group, you don't get in. It's pretty much that simple. So with that being said, uh, let's turn to what's on the screen right now and to this month's submissions. As always, we've got a lot of them, so I am going to be quick. Uh, we're gonna be moving through these at a good clip. Uh, and a couple of shorthands that I'll use. Sometimes I'll say you need more one, two, three, four, or five. One is your highest highlight. Five is your deepest shadow. Three is your midtone. So if I say you don't have enough two and one, that means you need more highlights or something like that. Uh, when I talk about contrast, I'll often talk about two different types of contrast, either uh, tonal variation of value so that is contrast uh, by adding additional light and dark light and shadow or i'll talk about uh, variation of hue or color contrast uh, so more use of color across the miniature uh, those tend to be shorthands that i'll use quite frequently so it's good to get them out of the way up front so let's get into it we start with dave here who says this is a 75 millimeter snap uh and this is for Tony Stark. We, we remember this moment if you saw the movie. Looking for feedback on the OSL in the recesses uh, and for uh, feedback on the non-metallic metal. Sure. So with the recesses, the key is they need to, it needs to fade more. So you, you do still need it's the normal rules for, uh, for highlighting or for doing inner glow. It's the same as painting eyes, the same as everything. Your brightest spot is in the center. Then you have on each side of that a slightly dimmer version. Then you've got to have something dark, and then you've got to have a soft glow of your number two. So one, two, dark, soft two, okay? So that's the same here. Um, so effectively, you have to have, if, if they're actually recessed, like I don't know if the model actually had a physical recess or not, but if so, then on the sides of that recess, there needs to be some, a little bit, it needs to be darker, and then it needs to come out to a soft glow. Um, if you want a good example of this, actually look at one of Sam Lenz's recent pieces where he does Void Dragon, and he carries the cracked pattern up onto the chest through freehand, and that's a good example of how it spreads. And he has it sort of going from intense to a very soft outer. And that's really what I see missing here is the soft, it just looks like painted lines, because there's no glow to it. A glow has a soft fuzz. Shine a light, a flashlight on your wall in your house. It doesn't like create a light to a point and then stop and then there's darkness. It has this soft fade out, right? So that's the same thing there. Now, as far as the non-metallic, I think the legs are the biggest success. Um, I think there's probably a little more four and five needed in a couple places, but I think that does work. Um, the chest area is actually, I think, the area that needs the most attention because it should be the same. It Like the red in his armor was also shiny non-metallic. Um, the red isn't matte on Iron Man. It's everything on him is reflective. So his armor is red non-metallic metal, which is very challenging. Um, if you want a good example of this, Banshee has done a few different versions of um, of, uh, of Iron Man uh, in all NMM. So you can go reference that, and that's a good place to look, um, as well as just looking at the actual movie resource, of course. And, and whenever you're doing a piece like this, which is based on some kind of reality, that's always the first thing I would say is go look at the real thing and really look at it. Don't just look, see it. Spend a half hour staring at a screenshot of Tony sitting like this. Notice every color variation, every detail, everything. And pick all that out and then transplant it over and continually refer back to it and back to it and back to it. Reality is always our best guide. Okay, next up, uh, Rodrigo. Uh, 
And he says, uh, finish this diorama, just some general feedback on it. Sure, so it's a cool diorama, um, you know, neat space. A couple things jump out at me immediately. Uh, I, I do like the color contrast here used. Uh, I think that's fine with the, the ghosts all having the blue and the storm cast in the middle being yellow. I think that's that's good. Um, the ground out around is, you could actually kind of bring this in a little bit. These people could be a little closer together. You generally want to use like a minimal-ish amount of space with a diorama. You've got a lot of figures here, but you could still scoot this in just slightly. We have a little too much open negative space. Um, you could also turn them a little more, especially like the guys on this side over here, sweep them around a little more so they're kind of coming in. It would, like, I get the understanding that you're having them all ride toward the front, but if they were just coming directly in, it would feel a lot more coherent. Like, it's strange that those, that three of these figures are riding toward me and not paying attention to their enemy, right? That's what's unusual here. Whereas we need to, like, the Stormcast to the central focus, so... The lines you create by the other figures by having them be in place is also important. The final thing that occurs to me is we we need we could have done some light variation here. Like you've got a light in the dark thing. So you need to have the highlighting should be, we don't often think of this with stuff like ground cover, but how you show light in ground cover is really important. Um, you, like the stone that they're on in the center of the thing should be well lit and have bright highlights and it should fade to shadows and very minimal highlights around the outside, which will then pop up the blowing blue, the glowing blue guys as well, okay? So you, the way you use light in dioramas is really important because you have to, you have a lot of stuff going on and it's very important to control the eye of the viewer, okay? So hope that helps. Okay, next up, John. Uh, this is latest little mini diorama um, and he's looking for some, you know, just sort of advice. So, I mean, I've got a lot of different feedback for you here. My, my first piece is, again, much like what I said before, you're using way too much space to tell the story. Like, this should be shrunken down to probably half of its size. Um, you just don't need empty space like this when you're doing a diorama. Two, we need to work on our contrast. A lot of the, the things in this are very flat um, as far as they go. Like, we don't have enough tonal variation uh, of, of value here, more or less anywhere on the piece. Um, so when you're putting tufts on, don't just put tufts onto gray earth. There should be, um, you want to paint those tufts in some way, shove some washes into them, put some, uh, highlight over the top, something like that. Um, when you're doing ground cover, the ground should not be gray scorched earth, even in the middle of like, unless there was literally just a fire here two days ago and this is all ash. Um, even then there would still be color in it. Okay. There would be embers and bits of other color. Um, but the figures themselves, they're very flat. Like, the figures themselves, which are supposed to be the central area of the piece, are very flat. The green is very flat. The blue is very flat. They're also all very saturated colors, um, which doesn't make the guy feel dead or, or sort of a zombie thing or whatever. He's supposed to be some kind of infected. Like, those things need to be desaturated versions of their colors, make him feel like he's part of that. But contrast in general, uh, you need to push that way up. So a lot of videos out there on contrast. I think Trevarian has one of the best around it. If you just search for Trevarian's contrast video, he'll take you through a lot of it. But we really got to up the variation of hue, especially on things like the ground cover and uh, other places like that, and the variation of value on the figures. Hope that helps. All right, next up, Paul Allen. A uh, little experiment with OSL and using desaturated colors. Uh, sure, so let's, uh, let's talk about it. So I actually want to go over to this image. So a couple things to point out. One, there's way too much white in that fire. Fire does not glow white like that. That's not how it looks. Um, you shouldn't have any pure white. You should have a tiny ring of white yellow. It may be in the center, maybe, if it's a super hot flame. This is not. It's a torch. It's a very cold flame, right? Like, if I go over here and Google, uh, let's just Google burning torch, and then go to images, okay? This is not white, right? Like what we've got here is orange and yellow and stuff like that, right? Now set against complete blackness, it'll feel white, right? But even then you can see there's a lot of yellow in that, right? When you set it actually against something where you've got a lot more color in the background, it looks a lot different, right? So um, the point is we should be much more in like a small yellow, mostly soft orange, into maybe the tips of like a deep red, brown, black to show carbonization area here. 
and the light itself should be mu much more into the, like you have a very, you're using a very like cold yellow, lemon yellow type of color. It should be much more in the warm yellow to orange spectrum into the light it's casting, okay? Um, there's a very particular band of light that this kind of incandescent thing will cast. And if you don't hit it, it feels fake like right away because our eyes just have an expectation of what it is because we've all been around candles and campfires and whatever in our life. And so we have a very sort of built-in presupposition as to what that color is going to be. Um, so that's probably the main thing. Now, as far as the light on the ground goes, it's the light on the ground isn't hitting correctly because where he's holding it above him, un undoubtedly he should be casting a big shadow. But most of the ground where he's not casting a shadow should actually be like just fairly softly lit with some of these rocks catching slight bright light points, right? Um, because it's all flat. It's about the, the surface to the light. The light's shining down on it straight, right? And it's just a big flat surface. He himself would be casting a shadow behind him, right? Where? Because he's standing directly between it. So you could, you could have a painted shadow coming behind him and that would sell it a lot better. But it's not gonna cast this. This, this stone is not a mirror. Right, what, how you've placed this this very strong, distinct light here, this is what would happen if the ground was reflective and it was actually like capturing the image of what's above it, but it's not, it's extremely matte, which means the light is going to be diffuse over the entire thing, okay? So, uh, yeah, I mean, that and like, those are my main piece of feedback, so hope that helps, Paul. Okay, next up, John, uh, first ever Stormcast Eternal. Uh, what you can do to push the next level. So I did look over the piece and my basic advice is they're gonna be the same as you'll hear me say a lot, which is more contrast, right? We need to push our shadows. We're especially missing every, all four and fives are just absent from this piece. We don't have any shadows going on. Um, the whites are very, very flat. They're all just basically three and that's it. You have no highlights, no shadows on any of the whites. The red here is way too saturated. It needs to be a, a deeper red. Don't don't put bright saturated red in one place on the miniature in where it doesn't belong. Like that's off color balance and you need to work on and then eventually like also adding contrast to the metals but there's also some paint cleanliness issues in here that i'm seeing where paint is getting where it shouldn't be um just general kind of smoothing and stuff like that like these highlights with blue go watch my exploring color blue series your highlights are very rough i can see the transitions if you go watch the exploring colors blue i'll show you how to highlight blue um, and make it not look like that um and you know, and but my best advice would be one, push the contrast, two, work on your paint cleanliness. Make sure you're going and cleaning it up, getting the paint only where you want. There's places where I can see blue on the gold and gold on the blue and stuff like that. You want the piece to be nice and sharp and clean. Just doing it clean will go a long, long way to improving the overall feel of the piece. Okay. So, uh, yeah, those are my main piece of feedback for you, John. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, Nick, uh, painting for about two and a half years, last model I painted. Uh, quick question, no matter how I thin the paint, it still looks chalky to me. Um, yeah, I mean, that just, you may wanna try a medium then, depending, it could be the paint you're using or something like that. Um, there's lots of different possibilities for that. Uh, I mean, my, I guess my main thing I would, I would push back on you here for your piece. I mean, it looks nice. Um, we do need more contrast in general, both of value and hue. Um, the skin is very flat. It does not have a lot of variation in what's showing there. The metal is very, very flat. It's basically just the metal color. Um, we need to actually see reflections and shine and shadow in that metal. Um, things like the feathers are a good opportunity to, to do something to pick those out. They just, they feel very strange um, into how they are. Like the, the structure of the feather with its little, um, gosh darn it, somebody recently told me the name Feth. Feth? I think they're called Feths. Um, it not being highlighted, the feth, and then these little, if I'm wrong, I don't know, something like that. And the spaces in between, like you want to draw out feathers. They're a good opportunity to really, um, show texture in a, in a way that's, that's, uh, compelling, right? Um, you know, same thing with the skin here on this guy's face. He's holding, like, it doesn't look like he's holding a human head because it's just, it's just basically one color. And there's like, even if it's a dead person, then it, there's still going to be tones and colors and highlights and value in the skin. So where I'm going to tell you to focus your energy is mainly on uh, your contrast. Now, as to thinning your paint, 
Um, if your paint's going chalky, that's either because you're stretching it too thin and uh, or something, you know, or or it's just the brand of paint doesn't have a high enough pigmentation. Um, you might try things like wet blending. You might want to get into that. That's a good way to avoid it. You might also try mixing medium or something like that in. That can help your paint uh, avoid that sort of thing. You might also try mixing and thinning your paint with ink because that still adds pigment but thins the paint and can make it more controllable. Um, so there are lots of options, uh, and I would explore some of those to see which one works best for you. Okay, next up, Philip uh, with his Ambot. Uh, and basically, how would you take the Mini up to the next level? Yeah, so, sure. Uh, I mean, it's going to be my very common thing I'm going to say throughout this, which is you need more contrast. The metals are very flat. The blue is very flat. Everything's very, like, everything is generally very flat, right? So we need to create more variation on these panels. These panels need to be panel lined. They need dark lines in between them. They need highlighted areas. I need to see both volumetric highlighting of, that is to say, volumetric highlighting means here is this particular area. How is this volume highlighted, right? It is the individual thing like this knee, right? But I also need model size by volumetric highlighting. This area should be very bright. This area should be very dark. As it stands now, they're the same color blue. Right. Whereas when I hold my arm up like this, this color is not the same as this color. I have a very bright light right above me. Right. This is not the same color as this. Because this is in bright light and this is not. OK. Um, but yeah, so definitely more tonal variation um, on the hazard stripes. You'll want to um, I would stay away from using again like a lemon yellow like you're using. Hazard stripes tend to look better as more of an ochre color. Um, you want to make sure those black lines are nice and crisp, and then you want to scuff them. So it looks a little bit too messy. Uh, it doesn't look like damage. It just looks like we didn't get the paint on fully. Um, I understand you're going for battle damage, but if we're going to scratch the paint of just the black, then why is there not equal scratches on the yellow? Why is there not equal scratches on the blue? Whenever we weather or damage, it has to be consistent throughout the model based on how the model would stand or, or how it would interact with the world. So as I say, it's okay to like really scuff and scratch the bottom legs of an Imperial Knight. Why? Because in, and, and not have much damage up top. Why? Because it is in the world, a 30 foot tall robot that walks around mainly in a world full of six to 10 foot tall things, right? That interact with its legs. So damage would focus on its legs. As it walks, it would scrape against things and buildings, and it would kick people, and there would be claws drug across its legs and everything else. Whereas the top of it, the pilot would remain relatively above it unless he took incoming fire, right? So, but when you've got a relatively human-sized thing, I mean, I know the Ambot's bigger than that. He's bigger than a person, but he's still, like, within the bounds. He's, like, ogre-sized, right? If, if this is going to be all scratched on the black, then I expect to see the yellow also scuffed up and revealing you know, metal or rust underneath. I expect to see scratches on the blue and lots of damage there. And you've got a little bit of it, but it's not directional in any way. Like you've got some small areas here and here, but they're not dark enough to actually display to me what's going on with the miniature. Like this scratched all to heck and back. And then the area three feet away, not even that far, sorry, the area half a foot away on his torso or such on his arm are pristine. What happened here, right? Okay, so so that's the kind of things that will break it up. So there's what my feedback for you and how I would tell you to work. But we definitely need to work on those metals. They're the flattest part of it. I have lots of videos on painting true metallic metals like non-metallic and how to add shade and highlight into metals. I would highly recommend watching those. Okay, uh, Marco, uh, paint job on large surfaces such as fur and wings, sure. So, I mean, I've got a video for all of this. So, one, go watch my How to Paint Detailed uh, Wings video. It was a very early one, but I stand behind it. It's, it's, I actually think I might have been using these exact wings. If not, I was using the Chimera's wings, which are almost identical. Um, but I was painting some big chaos monster like this. So, you know, you, you, the key is you need variation over the wing structure and on the bones of the wings, right? So where they're more stretched, they should be thinner and brighter. Where you get toward the grouping on the bone, it should be darker. And then the bone needs to come up again with some kind of highlight. Contrast, 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 contrast. We want to jump from light to dark, to light to dark, to light to dark, as many times as possible. Fur, um, I have several videos on painting fur. I would watch my most recent one, which is you know sort of a different way to do fur. But again, it has to be varied. Like whether you use sort of a dry brush technique or whatever, Fur cannot just be like, I'm printing it all brown and then I and then I dry brush it all light brown. That's not how fur looks, right? 
Fur itself has to capture volumes, same as anything else. And so there's a couple different ways you can do clumping with fur. That's the most recent video I have. So you can go check that out. Um, you need to add in different colors, have different changes to it. Natural creatures have lots of organic patterns and things like that. I would say the same thing for the skin. It's always the challenge on the Manicore. It's got a big flat open area of skin. And you know the key there is you need to look at things like stripes, demon dots, uh, patterning, chaos runes, whatever, right? Something, wounds. Like there's a million things you could do, but you need to create some kind of variation there. Like where this piece falls down is variation of uh, hue. Too much of this is the same, and this is the same, and this is the same, and this is the same, right? When you've got these big, flat, open surfaces, we've got to do something to break them up to make them visually compelling and interesting. And so stuff like that is how you do it. Each each section has its own tricks. And I, I have videos on all of them, right? So go check those out, and that should hopefully take you through what you need to know. All right, next up, uh, Matthew. Um, Love some feedback. What well works well with this piece and what you can improve and change. Yeah, so, Matt, I looked over this piece, and this is really tough because I think what you're going for is, like, a guy next to a really bright light, but it just doesn't work. So here's what I'll say, and I don't mean this in a, in a harsh way. Don't try to do this extreme OSL stuff, okay? This is a really hard thing to capture for very advanced painters. And it's important that you learn in order, okay? What I'm trying, and this sounds really harsh, okay? But I don't mean it this way. I just mean it, I'm going to say this as plainly as I can. I wouldn't put quantum mechanics in front of a sixth grade math class. It's all math, okay? But it's not the appropriate time for them to learn that. There are foundational elements they have not yet mastered that are going to keep them from being able to understand what the heck I'm talking about. And complicated OSL like this is the same thing. It's the quantum mechanics of high-level painting. Because you have to understand light and exactly how it works, how to capture it, how to shadow it, how to show fades, how to all that. Like, the problems here are myriad, okay? Um, and so what we need to focus on is just paint the guy, right? Because when I look at just the blue guy, the part of him that's blue, that I assume is, you know, his base stuff not lit by this, what I see is we don't have enough tonal variation, we don't have the panels properly lined, we don't have them properly edged and highlighted, we don't have them properly separated, right? We have some issues where the paint isn't as clean as it could be with how we're separating all our elements, right? Things are still too glossy, we need to mat them down. Like, there's a lot of fundamentals we need to work on here. So I'm not trying to smack your hand. I'm just trying to set your expectations accordingly, okay? And the the key is, you know, like, here's a very fundamental thing. If this is supposed to be some kind of big, bright light, there's zero of it on the base. None. He's wh Where is this light coming from that it didn't affect his, hit the base? Or the sword, right? If this sword is somewhat reflective, it should be yellow too, okay? Like, it should be showing... These reflections i understand here you turned it yellow but the problem is the yellow comma came over and hit i'm going to try to find an angle this would be if i had this in my hand it'd be easier here it hit his head here and his cloak here if this sword is that reflective that it turned completely yellow it would show yellow here from the counter reflection boom 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 okay so we just don't have enough contrast here like my my hard advice is don't try stuff like this not yet okay i appreciate the effort i applaud the effort Way to swing for the fences. You're pointing for the parking lot in, uh, you know, in Yankee Field here. But the problem is, what we we've got to <laughs> we got to get the fundamentals of batting down before we we're gonna knock a home run out of the park. Okay. So that's my best advice. All right. Uh, is work on those basics. Like I would love to see you take this fig and repaint it. Like 100%. I know that sounds crazy, but repaint it. And show it to me just in the blues that you have in your mind. Don't worry about the crazy lighting source. Don't try to let's not go, let's not go crazy. Just show me this fig, paint it. Okay? Like do a do your best job on this guy painted like in blue, in his blue armor. And and we'll see where we're at. Okay. All right. Uh Joseph. Uh feedback on the psychedelic orc dragster. Uh yeah, this thing is fantastic uh this is great 
Um, I mean, it is what it is. You've gone for, like, crazy town colors. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I'll say that much. I, if you're using every color like this in a total riot, somehow all of the chaos comes together. I don't actually think the wheels are a problem. I'll say that. Um, because when I relax my eyes, I don't see the wheels. Um, that's not actually what my eyes are drawn to. I'm drawn to the red. Because red is red and yellow are natural eye drawing colors, and you have them kind of right next to each other. So this, this, and this, this triangle are actually what draws my eyes. And you've actually created really nice balance of it because you got red, 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 red. It's really good, actually. That creates a nice balance. The cool blue that's soft and doesn't really take our eyes is kind of in the heart of the matter. And then we've got the exciting green around the outside. So you actually created some really nice color rings here. Um, like you've got a warm center and then a blue cold and then a green, yellow, warm uh, outer ring, fluorescent outer ring. So I actually think that works really well. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think that's bad at all. I mean, you know, wh what could we do? I mean, this is meant to be a cartoony piece, so it's not really meant to, you know, it's, it's, it is to be painted in the way that it is. And I think if there's anything I would just say on the orcs themselves, you may want to focus on perhaps, um, kind of smoothing some of them down a little bit. Some of the blends on the orcs themselves felt a little rough. That was kind of the biggest thing I noticed. Um, we could do things like some additional... I mean, like, I don't really know that you want to weather this thing or put dirt on the tires because it's not really what it's all about. It's This is a living cartoon. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to go that way, you could have a little bit of, like, dust or grime or something in some places. But on the whole, I think it's quite successful at what it is. To be 100% honest, it's fun and really cool. Um, in the type of art that it is, I think it's fantastic. So, yeah. I don't know what else to tell you. Well done. Okay, uh, Jonathan, uh, feedback on the 10 scale model, first attempt a lot of different areas, large areas of skin and freehand tattoos. Sure. So, okay, uh, when it comes to tattoos, I would encourage you to go rewatch my tattoo video. So, because prob part of the problem we have here is a tattoo has to be completely clear and then glazed over. And there's a very specific look to it. Like what I mean by that is these lines aren't solid enough. They're not thin enough. They, they feel very painterly not like tattoos and then they have to you have to glaze the skin over that to make it feel like it's set in there okay so i've got videos on doing tattoos and you'll see what i'm saying when i when i and i would also say you want to push them into a little bit more of the um, blue spectrum tattoos generally feel a little better to us if they have a little more blue in them and mix some skin tone in there as well and you know when it comes to tattoos of this size right like your best thing you can do is just go spend a lot of time google image searching and really look at how they look on skin there's a lot of pictures on the internet of ladies with tattoos of flowery type things uh so you can go find those i've had to spend a lot of time researching you know real world tattoos for lots of different projects that i've done so that's what i would say now as far as the skin itself goes it's way too flat for something of this size our, we need more variation of hue and value by a large amount on something this big. Um, like, she's this is a big bust. I need to see, like, we have such a size here. I should see the pink tones and the reds, the blues in the shadows, right? Like, those colors are really expressed in, these, in this size. So I need to see all that. I need to see the highlight of the skin. Look at my skin under this light. Okay, just like look at my face right now on the screen. Look at these lights that you can see reflecting from up above and the general highlight. Look at how shadowed my forehead looks right here. My cheeks, right? How much blue is down here? How much red is here? Now, I'm not this lady, okay? So, you know, it's not exact. Like, I have a five o'clock shadow. I'm not implying that you put that on there. But my point is, is that, like, that's the kind of variation of hue that makes somebody feel alive. Okay, so you might need on a scale of size. I hear sometimes people say like when you paint bigger, you don't need to push contrast as much. And that's kind of true. Okay, but you're still at one tenth scale. You still need to push contrast to make things look real. But what becomes more important is the detail and the variation of hue. That's a lot more a lot more important at this level. And with busts or, or this sort of, you know, thing at this size, that detail becomes so much more important. Everything has to have detail. Like at this size, you can see things like texture and cloth 
you know, you'll see individual hairs, like lines in the hair, all that kind of stuff needs to come forward. Okay. Hope that helps. All right, Alan, uh, feedback on your dwarf. Sure. Uh, so the, the main thing that jumps out of me on the dwarf, first of all, we're doing some good stuff with the skin. I do see a lot of red tones in there. Keep going, push that a little farther, but I do think that's a strong point. Um, I'm seeing more variation of tone there. More. We're, we're about 60% there. We got to go another 40% over top. The non-metallic doesn't really sell for me. Um, it doesn't have enough contrast. So like in the steel, I do not have enough one or two. In the gold, I don't have enough one or two, but I also don't have enough mid-tone saturation. So I understand you're probably going for a cold gold here. That's fine. I still need to see some kind of mid-tone on display that makes it feel more in the gold spectrum. So this can be glazes of things like ochres or, you know, Lamenter's yellow or anything like that that pushes some amount of it, especially in the lower two through upper four range. That area, those areas need to feel more rich. So that would be my main piece of feedback would be keep pushing the NMM and push the contrast and especially the variation of hue as opposed to value on your skin. Okay, next up, Abel, uh, going for a kind of grim dark look with subdued colors. Uh, can't get the yellow armor to look any good. Yeah, I mean, well, th I have a video on painting yellow. I just covered it again recently. I have multiple videos on painting yellow. And I mean, it just looks like we need to use more ochres and more uh, lower desaturated yellows. If you want them to feel a little... Um, weaker, you know, mix in a very, 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 very small amount of purple because that will desaturate yellow like instantaneously and make it feel very weak and sort of sickly. Um, and I mean, yeah, it's the key with painting yellow is to not paint yellow, right? You paint it browns and rust colors and flesh tones or pinks or whatever, uh, or Caucasian skin tones or whatnot, and then you lay yellow over the top of it. Okay, as you saw in the recent video. So that would be my main advice for you with painting yellow. It doesn't look like we're getting great coverage anywhere because I'm seeing lots of like spotting all over the miniature. So I'm not sure what's happening there, why we have such a spotty, like it feels like we're, we're not adding enough layers to actually cover the initial work of the primer or something like that. Can't really tell, but I see a lot of like dots everywhere and I'm not sure why that's happening. All right, next up, Ivan, uh, pretty much the best mini painted so far, looking at tips for uh, fur, leather, and wood. Sure. So see previous commentary I just gave on fur. This suffers from the same problem. You have two, ter two variations throughout the whole thing. Um, you can go back and look on the Tabletop Minions channel. Sam Lenz did an awesome video on fur. You can go watch my video on a better way to paint fur from recent but the key is you have to create variation of hue and value in the fur. So it needs to be, there needs to be color change in the natural creature. There needs to be light change as it reacts, all those sorts of things. Um, the metal, I would say again, doesn't sell for me. I know you didn't ask about it, but you said if there's anything else, the metal doesn't sell. Not enough one, not enough five. It has not have the, the full layer of contrast. It also needs its edges more cleanly picked out, just stuff like that. Um, you know, with wood, the key is if you want it to look really realistic, then you need a hyper sharp brush. You take like an ivory color and you start drawing hyper thin lines down the wood. And then you, you know, uh, glaze it over with browns to bring that all back in a tone. And then you repeat that three or four times, right? Um, on leathers, there's not a lot of real leather here I can see on this guy that I can really give you honest feedback on. Um, like maybe I can see a little bit of his boots, but... You know, with leather, the key is it should be, you know, I, I've done some videos on how to paint distressed leather, a couple of them. I would go watch those because that's the key. Leather has to feel scuffed, scraped. It has to have texture. It has to feel like it's got uh, a life to it, right? And that's what's going to make it interesting. Hope that helps. All right, Julian, uh, first time submitting. Um, so tried some bronze, true metallic metal. Tried to glaze some colors and still find it lacking. Yes, so do I. Um, the answer is you did not go far enough. So again, go back and watch my videos on adding colors into true metallic metal. There's not near enough here. Let's just start at the beginning. Don't worry about glazing colors in yet. Let's just get 
contrast in here, okay? We need a lot more shadow and a lot more highlight. Like right now, this is flat, okay? So it needs to have, like, if we're talking about some kind of bronze, then it's going to go to a dark brown slash black for its shadows, and it's going to come up to a something like a pale burnt metal is what I usually use to highlight bronze because it's a very weak brown silver highlight, okay? Maybe mix in with some of your mid-tone there. And we've got to start there. Once all that's done, then you can think about glazing in some soft colors where like purples or something like that on the piece that will make it feel more like it's cohesive to the overall item. So that's what I would tell you. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, uh, Alberto. Uh, so painting this bust and using the translucent cloth. Yeah, so let me say on the translucent cloth thing, I think you nailed it. I think that looks great. The transition from the skin tone with the shadow and the white, I actually love it. I think you integrated those lessons really well. Uh, the main thing that pops out at me here is the same thing I was just saying about the skin, which is we need more variation of hue. Now you're better along than what, what I, or you're farther along than what the previous one I just looked at, but we need to go farther still. So like her face especially is the area that, that I notice it in. Mm -hmm. um, her, her torso and stuff might be fine. Could probably use a little bit more tones, especially up under the arms uh, and maybe down here in the lower waist, but like down here. But for the most part, that's this is fine. The neck, like there should be a lot of reds. There should be some blue tone in the shadow of the neck, some purples um, up here in the cheeks, having pink into the cheekbones, having color under the eyes, like... Um, if this is meant to be sort of an Egyptian bust, which is the feel I get from it, um, Egyptians wore a lot of makeup. Like, it was a thing, very much, that Egyptians had makeup on, so it's not crazy at all to have eyeshadow. Most images you see of, like, um, uh, hieroglyphics and stuff, that people have sort of, you know, colored eyes and eyeshadow and stuff, or, or things like that. So, those kind of elements, uh, but just having more color in general in the face. And my best advice is the same advice I've given a hundred times here, which is go watch makeup contouring videos where women will show you how to put makeup on and reshape the face and part, you know sort of sculpt the perfected human face out of nothing but uh, paint and pigment, which is what they're doing basically, makeup and pigment. And that will show you where all the colors are placed around the eyes and everything. And there is no better teacher of how to paint a female face than women applying their own makeup, right? They're experts at it. They've done it every day for their entire, most of their, their uh, adult lives. So uh, I would trust them and they will point you in the right direction, okay? Um, in your little picture, you are pictured with a woman. So go ask her. <laughs> See if you, if, if you live with this person and, uh, and she puts, she ever wears makeup of any kind, you know, go to her and ask her how she puts her makeup on and where she does it when she's trying to go sort of all out, as I would imagine this sort of queenly bust would have, right? So uh, there you go. Again, real life is always the best teacher. Okay, next up, Morgan. First attempt at OSL, uh, specifically feedback on the OSL effect, light and shadow placement. Yeah, so, I mean, again, I would say that much like the last one, no, it really doesn't work. Like, I get what you're going for, that this thing here so first of all i don't love the idea of just like setting this piece of thing down on a base like if you're going to do this don't do this like don't let black plastic base be here put something else like dirt around it or something like that make that be uniform that's just a small thing for me um but like this is way too bright okay here's what i'm trying to say i need to really gather my thoughts here and make sure i'm communicating this clearly if this light were this bright then this room is pitch black. Okay? This is a... I'm going to put this back in front of my face. This is my normal paint light. This is a super bright light. Okay? This is, like, meant to be... It's, like, 5,500K or whatever. It's, it's huge. It's an insanely bright light, as you can see with what it does to my hand in the camera. Okay? Outside of putting it, my hand right here... When I go here, there's not much of an effect to it, right? Because I'm in a very bright room. For this light, which does not look like a super bright fluorescent bulb, okay, to be this bright, this room would be pitch black. 
in which case all of this would be basically un, you know not visible okay and we can't really like that's perfectly fine in a painting but that's really hard to recognize in in a 3d sculpted miniature because it's sitting in a room with light so it's going to look wrong right this is why osl is so hard like i i really ward people off doing osl as much as possible until you like because if you almost the way i would say osl is this if you're asking questions about osl then you shouldn't do osl that's i know that sounds reductive and really jerky and i'm not trying to sound that way but what i mean is you have to have such a fundamental understanding of how light works and how it's interacting with colors to sell the effect that by the time you've gotten to that point you're not going to have the question anymore now that to the side the the reality is this light if it were this bright would be casting ultra deep shadows the side of his face should be basically skin mixed into blue everything should be way darkened down okay and it should have only the softest of reflected highlights on it and this is all over over lighted okay what i mean by that is this light would not fill all of this area with light like this okay because the light clearly has a an edge here and these would be in shadow like there would be deep shadows here and here where the light is casting it if this is the, really the only light in the room right if we've got kind of an alien situation then this would there'd be shadow here and down here right over here this whole like in between each crevice like it's really important when you're when you're doing these sorts of, of osl effects that you create really deep shadows in the crack of everything because where the light doesn't hit okay it makes really deep shadows okay that's a soft light from above me but it's bright i again i paint under not only my normal painting light but i have a super bright light up above me that's why this reflection in my head is so pronounced right because my whole office area here i have like five different ultra bright bulbs okay pointed all around and you notice how deep the shadows on my hand get right notice how every crack and crevice in my skin shows okay and those are soft lines that's not like the lines in my shirt right look at how deep the line is in between my collar and my skin that's facing up that crack is facing up toward this ultra bright light and yet because of it there's this really deep shadow there because of how the light hits and my ear casting a shadow down here and so on Okay, so there's a lot to unpack with that. Now, if you're asking me like, well, I'm trying to do it for funsies and I, I, you know, it's fine, then sure, okay, have a good time. But you'd be much better off turning that light to like a soft red glow, you know, like an emergency klaxon or something, and just casting a very soft, subtle red glow on the underside of the miniature, but he's still in normal light. And just doing a really minimal osl and this is the thing people always swing for the fences they want to have it just like totally dominate the osl and that's it's just it's a very hard thing to pull off soft osl is so much better you know if it's a small red light it's an emergency light it's on it's casting some light some of his shoes have turned red got a little bit of a soft glow on like his pants on these pouches underside of his arm edge of the gun good to go call it a day right maybe the edge of this but for the most part the model still has has a, a, a decent light from above great and you have a good time so that's my advice for you all right next up newt um so newt, again finished models only said this last month you're posting me just a head it's not how this works okay so finished models only all right uh so that being said, I'll answer your question since you're directly following on from last month. Uh, trying more skin painting on a spare giant head. Uh, had limited paints as I'm moving. So happy with the highlights done with primarily Ushabti Bone. But I think I struggle more with shadows. Tried mixing in blues and grays. Yeah, for the most part, this is this is going the right direction. I mean, obviously the bones, the, the horns are too flat. We need to keep pushing, okay? So you need to be working in more tones. The same, taking the pink tones is fine. They need to be smoother and softer into how they fade out. They need to also show up here in the other part of the t-zone okay of the face the lips need to be more colorized and have something to them and then we need to soften that the, you need to also then control the volumetric highlight of the whole head 
where like this side of the head is brighter than this side or something like that because there's an exposed light. So that's my answer for you. All right, Aaron, uh, new here, but just a quick look around. Uh, first time using layering, color blending. Yeah, I mean, welcome. Sounds like you're a newer painter. Um, this is a tough piece to judge because it's just kind of a riot of different colors going on. My main piece of feedback for you would be like separate your areas more. Um, so like the eye is not that different than the skin, than the other little eyes, than his teeth and his mouth and everything. Like part of painting is about creating contrast and differentiation, right? And so his eye should feel different than his eye stalks should feel different than that. Also, you've got a lot of mold lines everywhere. Do get those scraped. Um, don't, don't leave these ugly, hideous mold lines on here like this. Like those are really pronounced. I'm not generally someone who bangs on about that. Cause I know I have plenty of times accidentally left some small, subtle mold lines there, but like these are really big scrape those um but you know in general what you want to do is we need to get the piece more separated the skin should be a certain color if it's if it's meant to be a sort of zombie thing fantastic give me a dead zombie skin i've got multiple videos on painting dead skin i've got another one coming soon then give me the eye and make it something different have its color be separated and have lines and you know you want to separate the pieces of the miniature okay so that's my best advice if you're talking about painting eyes they don't really sell as eyes um, I have videos on painting eyes. There's lots of videos on painting eyes. Go look at real eyes, um, you know. All right. Close up of eyes, right? This is what the texture of your eye looks like. That's real zoomed in, but like you see the texture of it. And so when you're, when you're creating something in scale where you could actually capture this kind of detail, like a central beholder eye, this is the kind of thing you want to be looking at for reference, right? Okay. It doesn't always have to be nightmarish or whatever, right? There can be lots of different ways it goes. You can be artistic with it and play with it like some of these do with the Photoshop elements that they've combined together, right? But the point is, is that that's how you want to think, okay? All right, next up, Juan Francisco Gonzalez, Hidalgo, Hidalgo great artist, great channel bringing us uh, the latest of his Stormcast conversions with his King Knight. Uh, beautiful piece. Just had him on the show recently for an interview. Great artist. Um, looking for mainly feedback on the copper and the gold. Yeah. You know, when I spent a lot of time looking at this guy, I really like him. Um, which one I, I mean, obviously this is top-notch work. One of the things that kind of occurs to me is I think here's my main thought. So I know you're using the white reflection point in the deepest shadow thing. Okay, so like all of these places where we have a deepest shadow to create, to insert some light. I wonder if we don't need to, um, well, two thoughts I have. One, I wonder if we don't need to build that up in slightly different stages. So you're using relatively thick paint to do it. And I wonder if it wouldn't be better if we had maybe two applications of a thin, somewhere between a layer and a glaze, so it had a little bit of a, more of a fuzz to it. And then you went into the center of that for the dot. They just feel like they're so abrupt of light catches and they don't have enough fuzz to them. There's, whereas, you know, on the armor itself, you've obviously got a beautiful build up to the, to the high highlight. So I feel like that could maybe soften just a little with something around the actual light catch. The only other thing I noticed that caught my attention was the light reflection on the underside of the globes being this pure white. Like if, if not this, I'm not sure about all of the light catches on the lower facing areas, like knowing you're using Darren's sort of four light method, right? Um, none of those are at the ground level. So anything that's hitting up it's hitting the round and coming up, is a reflected light. So I wonder if maybe softening those some, using not quite as pure of a color, making them a little more... Uh, well, one, you could make them a little more colorized, so we could take, like, you painted them on a green ground. You could almost take some green light and reflect it up there. That would be pretty bold and crazy. But, um, but even so, just softening it into maybe more of a, a deeper tone, like more into the yellow orange spectrum depending on exactly what's there so here i'm thinking of like the one under the knee the ones here at the top and this stuff 
you know, the ones where it's like a reflected light that's clearly meant to be not the primary light source hitting it, but something that's bounced, like a bounce light. Those not being the same pure white, I think would really help differentiate the high highlights from the the low bounce lights. That's the thing, the only thing that jumped out at me, was it feels like there's not enough differentiation between what's a direct light catch and what's a bounce light reflection. Hope that helps. Uh, beautiful piece, man. Absolutely stunner. Stunner. All this entire project has been gorgeous. Love every one of them. You should, everybody who's watching, you should go check out Juan's channel. It's under, it's under Juan Hidalgo. It's a great channel. If you want to see how he, he has a tutorial all about this guy and painting copper non-metallic metal, and it's fantastic. Okay. Prepping for my dock underworlds, which will be all not NMM. Would love to see some feedback on the skin and the NMM elements. He does mention that he took, he used Juan Hidalgo's recipe and posted right after him, which is funny. Um, that is, in the world of irony, that is pretty funny. Um, yeah, so with the skin, uh, the skin needs more variation. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You can really see it on the head. Like, we need more more contrast of hue and value on the skin. Keep pushing. Um, go back and watch my painting faces video again, and you'll you'll see some more stuff in there. Um, I like a lot of this. Uh, as far as the non-metallic goes, most of it sells to me. There was, let's go to the back here. One of the things I noticed is we do just need to work on smoothing it out. I noticed, especially on the larger surfaces, like the backpacks, uh, the backpack here is where I saw the most of the challenge. So I think your recipe wise, uh, keep in mind, this is that, that cone shape needs to have a bounce reflection okay so there needs to be a like okay you have two reflective metal surfaces next to each other let's just walk through this little mental experiment together this is a highly reflective surface and this is a highly reflective surface right we all agree okay cool because that's how you've painted them light came here and hit this thing where did it go well part of it went up and hit this thing right and yet there's no second light right here to show me where this light bounced and hit this, and this light bounced and hit this, right? So if you're gonna do this, you can't, it's not just, it's not a matte surface. It doesn't just have the light and then fall to shadow. It's gonna catch, it's a highly reflective surface, so bounce lights happen, right? So it has to catch at the bottom as well. So that's the main thing that jumped out at me. Hope that helps, Alan. Okay, next up, uh, Kyle. Uh, Models painted to tabletop standard, so any CNC is welcome. Sure. You don't need to write me a novel. Just write me what you want to, me to focus on, <laughs> just for the future. Short, sweet, to the point. I don't need backstory. Um, so the... I don't mean that with offense. I love that you have a large story to, to, large story to share. I just mean that, unfortunately, I've got a lot of these, and here we are. I don't actually bother... The pink doesn't bother me at all. Um, I mean, here's my answer. For tabletop, this is fine. It's fine. Like, I think for a tabletop paint job, you're in the right place. Using a lot of fun colors. They're bright, but they balance out relatively well. You did a nice job of keeping the composition in line. I have no issues. Okay? Now, if we were going to go up, sure. Um, then the first thing we would be wanting to do is smooth out a lot of these blends. A lot of these blends are really rough. We'd be doing things like focusing more on the on the contrast and bringing it up. We'd be especially focusing on variation of hue in the skin of the troll. So he's just like a lot of purple. There's no living tones in there. Reds and other things that should be varied in this, in the skin, around his nose and around his eyes and his lips and things like that. But yeah, I mean that would be the places you would want to go to if you were inclined to take it up to the next level like that. So that's my answer. But uh, yeah, cool piece. Fun thing. Fun, fun piece from Blood Bowl. All right, Chris. First time trying body paint. I'm curious to see if it sells or such. Also, the wings on the creature. Uh, no, it does not. Um, because it because it has too much of a darkness around the edge and not around... Like, you have a weird effect here where the edge of it is dark and the interior of it is light. And that's... Like, that's a strange thing. It would actually be the opposite way around because the thinner paint towards the outside would dry and be thinner and show more of the skin through and would be brighter. Okay. And have less, it would be less pigment, less, like, when you paint with a big glob of paint with your hand or somebody, like, dips and stretches, the outer part of it is the thinnest. The inner part of it where it built up is going to be the thickest, right? Um, so... 
you know, I don't think it's bad. Uh, it's just we've got that challenge there. Now, you do also need to pay attention to your, your volumetric shading on these. Like, this area here and here should be slightly darker than what's up here. This should be quite bright um, into how it's reflecting the paint around, right? So, my best... I'm not sure what you did as far as pushing the highlights. You might have taken what I did in the video. I don't know if you watched my war paint video or not, and where I went back in and highlighted. But the key there was I was just highlighting along, like, what would be this highlight and here and here, not the whole central part of the structure. Uh, now, as for the wings of our mini Cthulhu, yes, I agree, they do need more visual interest. I mean, they're kind of flat and nothing. So again, more variation of contrast and, you know, adding texture, like actually catching the texture of the wings, building that up and out, not only what's sculpted there, but what you can add through paint, I think would be the main way I could go. Um, skin tone looks good. Uh, you know, this is a great piece. Like, you did a great job. He looks really nice. I love the variation of, of hue in the skin. Um, I think that's really well. Love the the um, shaved down side of his head. I think that came out well. He looks like he's a sweaty, glistening boy. So I dig it. Um, that's that's fantastic. I think it's just, yeah, with the war paint, focus on more of like a, a stippling when you're applying it and stuff like that. Uh, and then focusing on how, how that paint will then respect the volumetric highlighting. All right, next up, Florian. Uh, first time working on highlights, and I tried my best with this one. Um, yeah, I mean, I can see the highlights. That's good. You're pushing the contrast. Great job. Now we got to work on smoothing it out and connecting them. So, like, each muscle can't be its own group, okay? So, like, the way you've pushed the contrast is good. That is to say, in the range of it, but the problem is you've done each muscle like it's its own thing. And I see this a lot with new painters where they're like, this th this is one muscle structure. It will be dark, and then build up to light. And then the muscle next to it will be dark, and then build up to light. That's not how muscles work, right? Um, like, the, all of this area should be brighter and have some connection to it. And then the center part should come up. Like, you need five, but volumetrically highlighting muscles means that, like, there has to be this softness of the transition and places that connect. And it has to sweep around it. They can't feel like these individual bubbles, of light, right? So work on connecting the tissue and then smoothing it together. And so my answer is, you know, go look at, like spend some time on putty and paint or something like that, looking at how those people handle like real muscly dudes uh, and go look at those. And you'll see how they connect to the tissue, like at the top through sort of like, this is all two and then there's, this is all two and then the one is up here on the top or something, and then it kind of fades down, and then you've got some darkness underneath. But it doesn't like, it isn't like each peck is like, circle of dark, circle is slightly brighter, circle is slightly brighter, circle is slightly brighter, highlight. Like, that's not how it looks, right? There's a there's a structure to it. Uh, like the wings, uh, you could go keep pushing those a little even farther, but yeah, I like the wings. A um, little more darkness, more four and five around the side of the wings. So we're pushing up our highlights, we need to bring down our shadows as well. All right, uh, Tim, uh, first time using the airbrush on a mini, um, the blends and if it looks airbrushed. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, this part, no, not really. Looks like you did a pretty great job with it. Um, most of it looks fine. I have no issue with it. Um, where on this side, I can see it because it looks like it's just too flat and all kind of together. Like the key when you're gonna work with the airbrush is you can't stop with the airbrush. It's not a singular tool. Like, you don't build a house with just a hammer. You better have a hammer on hand, but you're going to have to have a lot more than that, right? And the the where I'm missing the detail work is largely on his little slug friend, where things like the eyes don't have their dark line around it, and the elements... What I see a lot when people go to the airbrush is they stop sep the, the elements stop being separated. When we're forced to paint with a brush, right, then we're forced to, like, paint each individual element and so i paint all this and i'd naturally leave a little dark ring here and then i paint the shirt and things are all naturally separated if i'm painting clean when we go to the airbrush and i start over spraying all of this right then suddenly i lose this separation i gotta come back in i've got to build that in right i can't just stop with the airbrush so no it doesn't feel overtly you know overly airbrushed but i could tell because we didn't go back in and add the extra detail and elements and separation of the various components so there you go all right uh 
Bleep Bloop bringing us five more Blade Geist Revenants. Uh, so, yeah, he says uh, this is the same as before. Wondering about whether the tan uh, trim around the face mask is too similar to the gold. Uh, and, you know, how about keeping things cohesive? Yeah, so um, my answer is no. I don't think they necessarily are, you know, they, they, it looks very different. You used a different tone. I mean, if you were going to make them super duper different, um, I suppose you could have them be sort of the same green or something like that as the, the etherealness down there or whatever, right? Or we could just keep them like this dude who kept it all dark and then you have the helmet alone. But no, you're, it, it just that lightness draws extra attention to the face. So I think it's okay. Now, as to like continuing a scheme... Like, this is a great thing to opine on. I mean, obviously, Bleep Bloop's an amazing painter. I've, I've seen his work close up. I've had the I've had the good fortune of judging one of his armies at, or maybe twice now, I think. And as beautiful as they are in these pictures, it doesn't do him justice. Um, but my honest advice is, don't worry about it too much. Keeping things cohesive. Like, you're going to be a better painter, and your goal in growing should always outweigh your goal in slight cohesion. And I'll speak as a, as someone who has judged your armies in big tournaments. I would never dock someone for looking at a unit and seeing a better, more advanced painting scheme on one unit than another. That's just not how that works. We way overstate what cohesiveness means when it comes to armies. This has become this thing people have become obsessed with. And it's not healthy in the long run. Because the right answer isn't... Like, making co cohesiveness matters. In that, like, you shouldn't have a unit that's, you know, pink and crazy and full of ridiculous colors when you've got another unit that's just grays and painted in a Blanchitsu style. Okay. Right? there's clearly a spectrum here and I don't really care if there's slight variation as you're continuing to grow. I, in fact, I like seeing that. It actually impresses me because I'll look at that unit and be like, Oh, that one looks even better. Great. Wonderful. I fixed and corrected schemes. This one looks coherent. Wonderful. Right. I'm never going to mark people off more stuff painted coherent, but worse is not better <laughs> than some of your RV painted better. Like, I don't know how to explain this to people any more simply, right? No, that's not me slamming on you, Bill. That's just like, I've heard the same thing from people who are like, well, I know I could have did a better job, but I already painted these 10 and I didn't want to make the other ones look better. Cohesiveness does not have... <laughs> it's like the old story between accuracy and precision. Like, I threw the dart three times at the board and I hit the edge of the outer ring. That's precise. But it's not accurate. I would much rather have one unit in the bullseye and two in the outer ring. That's more points in darts and in life. Okay. So there you go. Anyways, that's my, that's my, that's my advice is always let you pushing yourself and growing be the ultimate, uh, dictum when it comes to how your units are painted. But yeah, these look great, man. And, Bleep, I hope to see you at an event next year, brother. I hope we get on the other side of this and I can see these beautiful things in person yet again. Okay, so next up, uh, Eugene. I'm just going to say Eugene. I don't know if that's right or not. Uh, feedback on a Scorpec Lord. Uh, some more greens and also mix in some reddish brown uh, to battle, I assume the battle damage probably, uh, to break up the monochromatic look of the Necrons. How could you further improve it? Focus on techniques and basing. Sure. Uh, so I have two primary thoughts. I think the greens are wicked ripping awesome. I think they look good. We could smooth out the blends a little bit. Sh like some of your edge highlights are a little big, but these are minor stuff. For the most part, I think they look cool. They look super necrony. Love the eye glow. They all work for me. What doesn't work is that base. Oh boy, good. Oh boy, geez. Um, we've got some torn up cork and we didn't do enough to disguise it. And it's just painted cork and it's all just gray. Do something with that. Like, don't just use cork. Cork should never be the final layer. There should always be something on top of it. Additional grit, additional stuff, paste, mud, rocks, dirt. Cork should not be the final layer. It does not sell. It just looks like your guy is standing on cork. Okay. Um, two, again, 
say this in every review video, so here's my time for my probably my third time in this one. Um, ground is not gray. Even in very dusty, gray, rocky climates, it's not gray. Uh, there is dirt, there is earth, there is life, there is growth, there is nature, there is erosion. Colors happen. Greens, red, blues, purples, oranges, rust, everywhere. Okay, so that needs to be happening. The main thing I would actually tell you to work on is just with the metals. Like, if we wanted to take this up to the next level, and this is a good shot to show it. By the way, I love this breakup shot. This is really cool. Cool thing you did here. Um, the um, integrating in some more tones, and especially shade tones. Like, where we have a problem on this guy is that we didn't take enough control of the light. More darker black lining in between the various silver elements, some more soft, subtle shades to really control the lighting as to how they're um, in, in shadows of this guy especially around his upper areas, his arms, his his head, his back piece. That's what really jumps out at me, that we don't have enough control of the shadows. Uh, so more shading on the metal would be the main thing I would I would push on. But overall, super cool dude. It's a great fig. These new line of Necrons are, are just really cool. Joel, uh, improve his TMM. You know that thing? I, I'm glad these came together. You know the thing I just said, Joel? That again. Silver's too flat, needs a lot more color, needs a lot more shading. That, like, here's what I want you to do. If you have problems with this, I want you to get some black paint. Get yourself some Abaddon black, straight up, okay? And I want you to take this Abaddon black, and I want you to go around this miniature and start painting full-on black paint shadows, period. I want the bottom of this helmet in deep shadow. Run a line down to create the shadow line, and then around here. I want this torso area, if this is metal, black. All right, I want you to drop it in between every shade. I want a, I want big, like underneath his butt, black. Side of the spear, black. Pure black shadow. Okay, this is how, I'm, this is how I, I'm pushing people to learn this now. Then I want you to slowly, slowly bring the metal back up with glazes. Okay. It's hard to glaze with anything that's not Vallejo metal color, so I would recommend that for the for the metal paint. But that will show you the contrast you're aiming for. Like if you paint all those black on all that black over your metal, and you hold it away from yourself and you squint your eyes, you'll see that it looks right. Okay? Then it's just a matter of smoothing the middle in between. So there you go. More contrast. Okay. Next up, Amy, uh, painted up hell. Um, general feedback. Um, so the transparency on the clothes, I saw you said you tried for that. It doesn't really work because your colors are still too saturated. This part of the leg is probably where it's the most successful because you did it really weakly. Up here where you have this much blue coming through and here where this much pink and stuff, it's just too strong, right? Whereas here it actually works because it's really soft. Right. So the key with those is it needs to be a very like even through transparent cloth, we there's a there's a filter there. So it's not the super full version of the of the um of the skin tone, right? It's gonna have this interference layer of white that desaturates it, that fuzzes it out. Okay. Um I the sword uh as well, like when we're gonna do this kind of color thing, make sure that you have those blends being smooth. And then as well, just kind of in general around her, I think she needs a little more uh, tonal variation in her uh, whites on the, the normal dress side of her. So again, pushing those up and a little more volumetric shading. But those are kind of the main things that jumped out at me. Snake looks really good, like the patterning. Uh, muscle guy looks cool, good texture. Um, so yeah, that works. Cool stuff. And uh, Bad Squiddo Annie is cool. She's awesome, she's great. Uh, glad to see people picking up fiction from her. Uh, all right, Jared Jiggles. Uh, Lord of Change first in at larger models. Um, so, so anyways. Um, yeah, so let's talk about this guy. Um, what I said before about the airbrushing is what jumps out at me here. Okay. Uh, like, there's not enough separation of the elements. Like, and it's really like you can see it here. Here's a good example. See this gold thing you painted the top. She didn't bother to paint the sides. Right. Um, on these feathers, on these muscles, 
We don't have enough separation. These little feather things on the back of this, these feathers here, here, these pieces here, these feathers in between on his wings, right? Like if you're going for sort of tabletop, this is fine. If you're trying to do something more than that, then we have to separate these elements. And that's the main thing that jumped out at me. None of these feathers are really separated with individual tones. There's no, none of the feth are picked out. None of the little individual pieces of the feathers. Oh, maybe that's why that's like that. Hmm. Oh, there you go. In other words, like, go watch. I, I have literally a video on painting detailed wings that uses these exact wings from the Lord of Change. Uh, and, um, uh, so at any rate, you know, that'll, that's a good, you can see that. Um, but again, just more separation of the elements, more detail. Okay. Like we've got to go in and still pick out all of this. The problem is it's a really big model, but you didn't do all of the necessary detail on Kairos here. Right. I, the color balance is fine. I like the color with them. Looks super cool. Dig the, the sort of, uh, synthwave scheme of him like the differentiation the color of the heads for the past and the future like i have no issue with that um that's all rock and roll so but the issue is we didn't spend the time on a model of this size to actually then bring out the individual detail okay so that would be my advice for you all right next up alex feedback on the armor and non-metallic metal also does the base work so quick note on the base yeah, it's fine. Um, generally, watch out putting leaves too much in front of your figure. like. But it's fine. You didn't block off too much there. So I think you're right on the line, but it's okay. Just be careful having too much of anything in front of your, your miniature. But I think this is okay. You're you're on the edge, but you're, you came down the right edge of it. Uh, armor itself looks good. Um, like the blue. Like the highlight. It looks shiny. I, I think that's actually real reflection. You should mat that out. It shouldn't be shiny like that. Because that's like that feels like actual light reflecting where it shouldn't be and not paint. Like, this is light in the shadow. This stuff needs to be matte. It should not have that kind of reflection to it. That's the number one thing that jumps out of me. Um, Non-metallic looks good. Not enough one and two on the gold, um, especially down here on, like, the little... I don't remember what these things are called. His little holy reliquary. Is that what it is? Maybe. Anyways, needs more Needs more one and two. More edges reflected, stuff like that. It's not quite catching enough light. Um, the, the Aquila looks good. Uh, I don't mind that as much. That one I think is fine. And then the shoulder pad, I think, is, is pretty good. Again, maybe a slightly higher highlight on the highs, but I think that's probably the main area. I think the armor's great, though. Um, it sells for me. I've, I've got no issues with it. Um, yeah, no issues with the armor, except that it needs to be a little more matte. Great-looking guy. This is wonderful, Alex. This really came out awesome. So, yeah, great-looking uh, space marine there. Okay, next up, um, Tygo. Uh, an attempt at using... Sergio Calvo's Cappy bases. Um, yeah, so let's talk about Cappy bases and what he's doing there. Um, most interested in opportunities to improve things like highlight placement, color contrast, and composition. Sure. So I think it's fine. <coughs> I mean, the, the, the model itself is kind of rough. It's not a great model. Like, I don't mean any insult, but it just it's, doesn't have, like, the crispness of detail, so it's kind of hard to evaluate on those areas. One of the things with Sergio's cappy bases is that he doesn't really work just with those cappy bases. He then glazes at the end with an airbrush or something like that. Like, it's rare that he just does layers, right? And if he does, then he does a ton of them. But you generally have to glaze at the end to smooth that stuff out, whether it be with an airbrush or with a brush, okay? Um, the, uh, I mean, as far as if we're just talking about evaluating light placement, it's quite busy at the moment like there's a lot of different light placement going on and i don't really see the structure of it all your volumes are very even and like what we need to do is create different volumes and crisp that stuff up like the problem is i need to have like a thin highlight and then a broad dark volume and then you know passing out light dark light dark light dark or i need to have a broad light and then a little bit of dark as it is now, we have this very sort of even play across a lot of the miniature. It makes it really hard to read. We also don't have enough dark line separation in between the various elements, like the hand from the grip, from the the leather, from, you know, it's like these things need to be more separated, like the rope from the leather, right? And one of the tricks to how Sergio paints is he starts really dark at his darkest color, 
and then he slowly, 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 slowly layers up. Right. So he's he is building these through layers, but oftentimes it's just a ton of them. Right. Depends on how like when he lays shingles, he's laying tight shingles on that roof. So that's kind of my main thoughts there. I hope that helps. Okay. Uh, Jarls, um, first time submitting uh, something that looks great and something should be improved. Um, the main focus was high, was light placement from a volumetric perspective. Um, sure. So I think that... Um, we need to work more on the volumetric lighting. It didn't really sell. Like, volumetric lighting means both the overall piece and the individual shapes. And there's just not enough of that going on. Like, this round ball does not have enough shadow here on this side of it. Like, I, I couldn't tell you where the light is coming from on this model. Okay? Um, the Also, when we're going to paint, the battle damage really doesn't work for me there. Um, it's too, like, it needs more separation. It needs to be clean. Like, you're, you're, it looks, feels like you, like, on a fig of this size, it's too big and it's too much brown and it's just too messy. It needs to be more small scratches and hints and things like that. And then the little rust stippled in there. Uh, and then the edge of the yellow picked out with a brighter yellow to show the edge of the transition. Um, so the, the volumetric needs to, like, we need to have more, like, on the hands and feet, right? Like, that means that there's shadow like this, right? And here we just don't have that. The recesses are shaded. The highlight is just this tone. I have nothing shaking me around the volume of the miniature and really telling me that story, like, with his arm muscle here, All right? So, and it could be, I mean, the fig's not that great of a figure. looks like cast-wise as far as what it is. So, I mean, that could certainly be having something to do with it. Like, it looks pretty rough. Uh, but it's not doing you any favors. I'll say that much for sure. Um, the, you know, where, probably the most successful is something like the the tubing. Because I can see where you kind of place highlights and shadows. That's the one part that, that works for me. Uh, because they, I can see like a defined highlight and shadow in a volumetric fashion. Okay, cool stuff. Great. I get what's going on there with the tubing story. It just feels too much like we we didn't... We should have like taken the yellow, constructed the whole armor, had everything nice and clean. It's just too messy and chaotic, and your weathering doesn't make any sense to me what's going on. There's no organic story being told. It just looks messed up. But it's all similarly messed up. Like, every rust chip is basically the same size, and that's problematic. So, uh, hope that helps. All right, Greg uh, went for a tabletop level with his Chaos Lord. Feedback on the red armor and the base. Sure. So thinking about this from a tabletop perspective, I think it's fine. Like from, you know, tabletop standard. Sure, you're there. Now, where are you going to go next? Like, could you go farther? Yeah, I mean, we could do a lot of things. We can pick out some edges or, again, increase our, like, what we really need to do is increase the contrast on that red. If you were going to ask me what should I spend the next couple hours on working on this piece, it would be the contrast on the red easy answer every time i would also pick out all the details like you have metal spikes in this blue ribbon this is a, this is a blue piece of leather or ribbon or something these are metal spikes they should not be blue right so just actually picking out all our detail making everything nice and and crisp and clean getting all of this battle damage done and then highlighted like little stuff like that is where you would spend the rest you know your time from here so there you go greg hope that helps all right, next up, Sean. Uh, tried incorporating some oil washes to dry pigments. I like critique on the use of oil washes and on the edge highlighting. So the edge highlighting doesn't feel strong enough. Feels like we need to to beef that up because um, I can't really see. I mean, there's the, the shield. It looks okay. But we don't have enough, like, darkness separating it. You know, I've done a couple videos on black armor. And we just, like, there should be a dark line around here. There should be a dark line here. This should be dark line. This should be dark line. This should be dark line. These edges are way too thick uh, for what they are and not pronounced enough. Um, I think Darren Latham's channel is still up and he has a great video on edge highlighting Space Marines, so I would go watch that. Um, but it just, it's not selling for me, right? Um, now, as far as like an oil wash goes, 
yeah, it looks like where you got it in there, it's fine. It looks like it probably might have been a little too thin. It didn't have enough effect um, because some of this stuff, it doesn't look as clean as it could. I mean, it's really, I couldn't tell the difference or evaluate an oil wash. It's not the kind of thing you can do. Either you created the dark lines you wanted or you didn't. And in this case, we have places where we didn't. So there we go. Um, pigment looks fine. Uh, I like the use of dry pigment. You did a good job with it. Didn't overdo it. Looks like he's on a little Martian base or, you know, that kind of oxidized ground coming up on his feet on the bottom of the tabard. Yeah. Yeah. No issue with that. That's good. Good stuff there. So there's my feedback for you, Sean. Hope that helps. Okay. Next up, Abe. Uh, any tips on pulling together pieces like Chimera, which has multiple things that seem to clash? How would you improve this piece? Yeah, sure. So chimeras are tough because they have these three weird heads. And again, the, my advice, I like your solution of doing it on the wings, having crazy colors incorporated there. I think that helps. Let's go a step farther and let's talk about how we could have brought some into the body as well. We could have had some demon dots in orange and blue on the body itself. Some stripes, some jagged patterning. His tum-tum could have been orange out to a blue and then faded to green on the top. He could have had a, a, an orange to blue underbelly. Um, like, so there's lots of ways the key is you just got to think of the creature as a palette and how am i going to paint this to be balanced right where do i need to put color in this area cool how do i do that right and you just got to like get in there and figure out exactly how it's gonna how it's gonna mesh uh now you know feedback in general the chimera body again i would have told the same thing needs more variation so this would have been a double double win um on i don't mind the patterning on the wings but we still need to heed the volumetric highlighting of the wings they should still be darker toward the the bone braces and the little tendrils or whatever they are his fingies and lighter where the stuff is more stretched same with the fur and the texture on like the heads they don't feel like they have enough contrast so we need to push and pull that up more contrast in general on all the heads so there you go hope that helps all right next up scodster uh so uh feedback is is always well appreciated uh yeah cool no this looks great me mentioned he used a heavy body acrylics to do it i think this is really fun um i like this i'll tell you there's one part of this that doesn't work for me scodster that, that i mean like i think for the most part this is well executed there's a couple of minor critiques i could give you like picking out more of the individual ends of the hairs and stuff like that feeling more of a stranding technique to them of thin lines Little, little things like that I noticed around the piece, but there's one thing that doesn't work, and it's this line of red right here. This line of magenta. I like the magenta, but it's too strong. What I mean by that is its saturation level is too high. I don't mind this lower one, because that's actually telling kind of an interesting story down here in the shadow that he's reflecting this sort of magenta area. But this upper one wouldn't be catching the same thing as this one. This one should feel more desaturated. If that was a lighter tone, if it was more desaturated, more pulled into the gray, gray blue, and was a little more subtle, still there, still magenta, right? But it was weaker. If it wasn't such a punch of that color, I would feel a lot better about it. And I think overall the piece would have a lot more impact because it would feel a lot more natural in, in the world it's reflecting. So that's the main thing that jumped out at me. The other thing is, please don't use unpainted crystal stuff like this on your base. It always looks bad. Paint things on your base. But if you're going to put down tufts, if you're going to put down flowers, if you're going to put down these things, paint them. You put a lot of time into painting everything else, paint these two, paint these, paint these, paint this junk, right? Unpainted things on painted things stand out every time, always. So there you go. But overall, cool stuff. Love the highlighting on the muscles. Skin looks great. Absolutely fantastic. Great tonal variation. Great hue variation there. Yeah, I mean, look at that. When we flip into that into that black and white on that skin, mm, molto bene. It's great. It's wonderful. I can see my one through five. Switch back over here. I see that wonderful hue variation. Love the tones you're moving through. I think this skin is an absolute win. It's fantastic. Fantastic. All right, so next up, Alex. Uh, first post for review, interested in general feedback. Um, sure. So, I mean, it's I've, I've painted this Bones guy. Um, fun little fig. You know, it seems like you're early in your painting journey. So <laughs> what you did well is you did separate the elements nicely. 
I can see some nice, clean, dark lines between everything, and I've talked a lot about that in this review of how important that is. Um, my main thing you're gonna, I'm going to charge you to work on is going to be contrast and understanding volumetric highlights, right? Like understanding contrast. Um, that's the main thing you're going to, you need to challenge yourself with is just continuing to push your, your contrast and working that up. At this point in your painting journey, that should be understanding your contrast and how you should push things is really your next step. It's short and sweet advice. And it's the number one thing I should say. As I mentioned earlier, Trevarian has a really great video on it. I have many videos on it. Um, so I'll uh, check it out. That's what I would say. Okay, uh, Mikhail, um, asking for general feedback. Sure. So what I said earlier about dioramas, this one really suffers from it. This thing is three times as big as it needs to be. This diorama should be about this big, like from here over. It should be about that. <laughs> okay? And dude one should be here, and dude two should be here. Right? They just, they're, they're, this is way too much space where nothing is happening. This is all just nothing. It's a dead space. Right? When you're doing dioramas, that you, like, you can use negative space if you make it part of the piece, if you have something artistic happening, but it's not. It's just earth, right? So that's the challenge here. Um, I think the water looks fine. I think the green and the of the rocks and all of that looks cool. I just think there's way too much of it. Um, as far as the piece goes, the vampire guy or whatever he is here, the cloth, um, we need to pop that red up, get rid of sort of, it feels like just kind of washed red cloth. We need to actually take a little more control of the the red on the cloak um, so that it's a little bit smoother. It's getting too dark, too high there. Like, this is an upward-facing part of the cloth that clearly just looks like a bunch of wash settled in, right? So this should all be basically red, and we should have some real bright red here. And then maybe where it swings back up, we've got some nice, soft, subtle shadows of purple, brown, black, whatever, right? Those are my main thoughts that jumped out at me. So hope that helps. All right, John Gallant, uh, good time to get back to it. Massive Stegodon with a Slon Star Master uh, as a main head honcho, okay? Feedback on general competition and tweaks. Yeah, sure, so fun image, or fun piece. Love, uh, what was his name, Mazdamundi. He used to be the Slon who rode around on the um, on the Stegodon, so it's cool stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, in general, again, more volumetric highlighting on the Stegodon itself. So he's very much like, here's his skin, and it's washed, and then it kind of has some highlights on it. But again, the under part of the belly of the guy is as bright as the top of the guy. We're not respecting volumetric highlights. Um, same with the shields, like these Lizardman shields. Um, Goobertown Hobbies has a great video called like his biggest breakthrough in painting or something like that, where he, where he actually goes through and highlights these shields. And I think it's a great lesson on how to do these kinds of scale highlights. Um, the black sort of whatever it's supposed to be of the throne is very, very flat. So, you know, just more tonal variation there. But yes, more contrast and more uh, of, of more contrast of, of tone, I think, is what's really needed here. You've certainly got the color. I mean, color-wise, it's fine. From most angles, you've got the purple and the yellow. The turquoise kind of scattered around, and those work fine together. So I have no issue with that. It's just we kind of need to... We need to get more contrast of uh, value in there, especially in respect to these volumes. So there you go. Hope that helps. Okay, Nako. Um, main chaplain from the Invictus box. Um, OSL is meant to be soft to appear a light source. Uh, far or not strong, hopefully it was achieved. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's take a look at this OSL. This is what I was talking about in the previous one. Yes, I do think the OSL works in this case. Changing it to a soft glow like this, this works for me. Okay? Um, I wish I had a little bit tighter view of this guy, but overall, I really like this guy. I think it's for the most part works. The OSL works. Um, the black armor on the other side look feels like it needs a little bit deeper shadows in some places. We went a little too gray over a little too much of the area. But for the most part, I think this guy works. The red eye glow works. The um, gold, I think in some parts you've got exactly the right balance. This shoulder pad is the big success to me right here. Comes all the way up to the one we can see right here. It gets way down to the five. Nice, beautiful, bright reflections. I think I'd like to see a little bit more of that one up in, especially these exposed parts up here. Maybe a little bit more one to really brighten and, and get the light catch out there. That's probably the main thing. But overall, I think the sky looks really, really great. I think he did a fantastic job. So, yeah, big success. And the OSL absolutely works for me. Nice, soft, subtle glow. Shadows are still respected. I can still see all the nice hard lines. 
uh, and the pieces are just capturing this very soft, subtle red. Yep, that's working for me. All right, Stephen, uh, latest piece, working on good, smooth blends and contrast and glazing different tones. Okay, um, so was it right to repaint the shirt? Yes, but not as that color. That was the wrong choice. Um, you know, what you did is you looked at it and said, what color haven't I used? And the problem is you've used too many. We have yellow, green, blue, purple, red, orange. Like, we can't be a rainbow scattered around like that, right? This shirt should have been the same red you used already down here. You told me there was a piece of cloth on this guy. It should have been that same red. That's the bottom line, right? Now, as far as blending goes and stuff like that, you know, I can see where you're coming along. Still need to work a little more on it. That's fine. And we need to be, again, like I've said most, keep pushing that contrast. We need to heed the general volumes more. Like right now you have too little five just in these deep recesses. It doesn't come out enough. The muscle structures aren't these islands. It's not It's not a desert, dry, cracked desert landscape, his arm, right? Where there's some deep crack in the earth. I need shading that's like here around the side that comes all the way up and then creates a highlight for me here, right? And same thing, this should be more into shadow coming up to a naturalistic highlight here. Right? So it's about creating these soft transitions on these big muscle structures. So there you go, Stephen. Hope that helps. Okay. Chris, still working on keeping nice thin layers, trying to add about a bit of TMM in a bit more focused way. Okay. That's not telling me what you want me to give you feedback on. Remember, please tell me. But that's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, I think looking at this piece... What we need to do here still is continue to separate the elements. Where That's my major piece of feedback for you here is element separation, things like panel lining and panel edging. Especially amongst his legs, I don't feel like I'm getting those hard separations of the individual plates, having nice dark spaces. I see it on the arm here as well. So nice separations of the lines through panel lining and highlights and stuff like that, I think is what we really need to focus on, okay? All right, James Lynch. What, when it rains, it pours with this guy, huh? Uh, Nurgle Demon Prince used acrylics and oil washes looking for general feedback. Uh, yeah, so this is good. Uh, I like it. The the This is what I'm talking about with the tones, right? This is nice. Uh, I like the, the arm shading here. Good variation of hue. Color composition. It's probably fine. Uh, yeah, it feels like it could use a little bit more of this turquoise color so it might have been interesting to kind of work some of that uh as a verdigris into the the rust i know that's technically incorrect but who cares it's nurgle he's he's so such such is the destructive power that he can cause oxidation of of that kind on even steel um you know i mean darren did it in a video you saw him do it in one of his in, in his nurgle metal and honestly i thought it looked pretty wicked ribbon awesome so sometimes we can bend reality to, to sort of color composition because i think a little bit of that scattered around here would about would have been the final note to really balance it out but overall elements look really cleanly separated good color some of the turquoise could come down a little darker i'd think about maybe a little blue black mixed in to create some deeper shades where i don't i don't see enough four or five in the turquoise colors but for the most part i think it looks really good um cool converted demon prints yeah i dig it hope that helps james all right okay so, um, his go on textured but shiny gold non-metallic metal. Um, sure. So, overall composition-wise, I think it's fine. I think you could have made this gem pink. Um, I understand you're probably drawn from Richard Gray's um, piece here. So, I do think that the texture is fine. We do need you still, you still want to smooth it out some. There's a careful balance here. The texturing of metal can be very, very subtle, especially in this scale. So, some final glazes will really still bring it all together. Um, I think that if this gem had been pink, it would be in balance. That's my honest answer. I know that sounds like a very reductive, simplistic view of it. Um, but that's like the one part I noticed being kind of out of, um, out of balance. Now, as far as it goes, I think you capture the general tones here. I really think it'd just be a matter of bringing that last piece into, into focus and, uh, doing some final glazes to smooth it all out. But overall, it's a good looking piece. Okay, <clears throat> Jamie. Um, so basically he's saying, you know, review this as though I'm paint judging for a competition. Sure. So 
one, it's not smooth enough. That's number one. We like there's a lot of places where the blends are really, really rough, and I would notice that immediately, right? Um, we've just got a lot of roughness into a lot of our blends here, 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 up here, 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 like you get the idea. Okay. So I think it's a cool piece. I, I think you've captured the, the darkness pretty well. Um, I like the different use of colors feels very craft world studio inspired. Um, when it comes to the various elements, like the leather, I don't feel like we're capturing the texturing very well there. That'd be the first thing I'd notice is that like we it we have these various elements, but we're not capturing the actual texture of the leather. Whereas it's rough, but it's not rough in the right way. Yeah, that sounds really weird, but that's what I would say. Um, the reflection points I think are relatively nice. So you've got some minor OSL that I think for the most part sells, but again, we need to smooth it out. The biggest thing I noticed with the OSL, it does feel like the hottest point, so that's very good but it doesn't feel like the the light is carrying out like this surface of his shoulder pad is probably not as shiny as the reflective gold so that needs to be a little more matte a little more smoothed out like how the light transitions off um these kinds of things the um shadow up here on the top should run against the light not it shouldn't be light on light it should be light on shadow like this should be the brightest part because it's going to be capturing the most light of the reflected light up and it would be opposed by a line and then of light from the edge and then a shadow and then this top part should be lit. So just little balance things like that. The gold NMM doesn't come up high enough. It's not showing enough reflection. It should probably still have the same soft ambient cold highlights as everything else. So like blue white light just to kind of set the general mood of the piece. Those are the kinds of things I would notice. So hope that helps. All right, next up, Daniel, uh, appreciate some general feedback, specific area where you can improve the most. Sure. So the number one thing that jumped out at me was on the skin tone and just kind of in blending in general. Um, the skin tone doesn't have enough variation in it. Um, I think that's actually skin, but uh, like up here in his hands and stuff like that, it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's got enough variation. It needs more more variation of hue and contrast in the skin. In general, some of the blends are a little rough. I, you know, the scheme is very fun. Again, sort of synth wavy inspired, um, but we, we need more uh, separation of some of the elements up top here, especially on this little chain thing, but also then smoothing out some of the blends, like where we've got shadows here, stuff like that. Some of the details up here are a little rough uh, in between the fingies. Like these highlights are really, really rough here with blue. So smoothing out those blends, those would be my main points of focus. So hope that helps. Okay, Kieran, uh, so Loon Boss on Giant Cave Squig, looking for feedback on the blends on the skin, how you would increase the contrast. Yeah, so it definitely needs more contrast, like, everywhere. The metal needs more, the skin, especially the skin of the goblin, needs a lot more. I mean, I painted this guy, so I would go look at my version that I did of him, and you'll see kind of how I contrasted the skin. But the flattest part of it is definitely the, the squiggy, especially up top, and then the skin of the goblin just looks like flat yellow-green. That needs a lot more variation. Deeper green shadows, you know, integrating in reds to create some deeper warm shadows. Um, you can bring up some colder highlights through ice yellow. Um, you can integrate pinks and stuff like that around places where there would be blood near the surface or things like that. Um, all of those things are, are options. But yeah, I mean, we just need a lot more contrast of value on the skin. And then through that, you can then choose to work in the hue over interference colors between the highest, between like your one and two or two and three or something like that okay um same with the squiggy itself he needs the same sort of treatment more texturing with him is really the key because he's got a lot of roughness and spots where you can actually build him out he's got bumps and spots and skin he can have roughness you can push that up around his cheeky bones his eyes his lips his nose he's all these little bumps and things he has on them picking those out boosting those up go look at uh i mean my version is is neophyte compared to richard gray's masterclass version on this this fig that he did so you know go spend a while looking at that one and that would really be a good help for you okay next up alexander uh welcome uh so happy to have you alexander um i, I know your stuff it's good stuff always looking for feedback and analysis looking for what's good and what's bad this is one of his competition pieces for golden demon whenever our next one happens so yeah I, I spent a while looking at this guy and let me say alexander he's absolutely fantastic um love the skin tone uh, this is capturing everything I've been talking about so far in this review. 
The texturing on the cloth and all the different elements feel really good. Um, the highlight on the sword hilt here needs feels a bit sh abrupt in its light to dark. Um, one of the judges would probably notice that, so you may want to like bring this up a little bit, like have this come down at kind of this angle, a little more like two in this area here. Um, the biggest thing that jump there's, there's a couple little things that jump out at me. These are things that like I know Golden Demon judges notice. Um, the hilt on this sword needs better picked out with its individual elements. The um, like his little mini side dagger, whatever you want to call this thing. The boots don't feel like they have as much attention as the rest of the the leathers and the elements. This feels like it needs more more high more texturing. I don't know if it necessarily needs more highlight, but it needs more something. Like probably deeper shadow separating of the two elements of the soles and the boots themselves. And then the biggest thing that jumps out at me is just the sword. Um, I don't know that the sword works for me at all. I'm not sure where to go with it. It's in a really interesting tone you picked to align with the rest of the piece, but it doesn't feel like it has enough contrast. Like, I can't tell what it's made of. Love the blood splatter. You nailed that. That is, I mean, that is dead on. Like, holy crap, that's one of the best blood splatters I've seen. But just the coloration of the sword, and I don't know if it doesn't have enough high highlights, and it might be that, but it feels very much like it's not respecting the lighting conditions that you've set the rest of the piece in. Like, I can read the light on the rest of this piece really well. Like, it's coming from here, right? Because I've got this nice highlight here showing me. I've got this reflection. I've got this Zangor head catching some great light. Top of his knuckles, the muscle structure, the top of his pecs. Like, all of that's catching my light. I'm getting it all. I'm reading it. I can see the total volumetric highlight of the whole shape. But then the sword just kind of is on its own. It doesn't feel like it's heating the same light that the rest of the piece is in so that's my biggest thing i noticed when it jumped out at me alexander um so yeah that's that's probably what i would focus on and it may mean that you have to paint over your blood splatter and then go back and do recreate that blood splatter again i don't know you could try pushing up and varying some of the highlights bringing in more one more two and really kind of maybe increasing the contrast on it to make it feel a little more metallic without repainting the whole thing so i don't know but it's it's a challenge for me that's the biggest part that jumped out of me so i hope that helps man hope to see more from me in the future beautiful stuff okay next up panda uh looking for general feedback where are the main flaws so the biggest thing i noticed was just in sort of the smoothness and you know uh, how we're we're applying everything we want to work on our blending, get stuff like that. I know we're trying to capture some texture here, but a lot of this is just we can see in the weird, and I mean, a lot of this the sculpt isn't doing you any favors. But we've got places where it just looks like wash got trapped, and then we layered back over it. These need to be more smooth blends out that really tell the story. The blood soak here in the basket doesn't really work. If this is what you're going for, it needs to be a lot deeper magenta as it would soak into this. But we don't have enough contrast in general on things like the basket. That feels very flat. Um, the skin itself, we want to we want to smooth a lot of that out. Same with these deep shadows on the skin. That's what really sticks out to me. He's got these weird recesses in the cast. I don't love the cast of this, but like if you're gonna have those, then we can't let the wash just kind of settle in there, and then we do some layers on top because it just looks like he has these weird pits in his skin. So that's the main stuff that jumps out at me, Panda. Hope that helps. All right, Sang, uh, landmark piece for his second year in the hobby uh hey i'm so happy to help you improve watching your your stuff over the past you know year has been incredible um moving up into scale what i'll say is we've got to work on smoothing everything out at this scale when we blow up and suddenly we're in this massive you know bust scale where it's only like one sixth or one tenth or whatever it happens to be things like the texture we're doing and the, the smoothness of it really need to show so like you're going for this sort of brushed texture and that's fine, but it can't be this pronounced. And there's, a, again, there's this super fine line. And somebody like, um, uh, somebody like Lan is a real master of this, right? Where you can see the texture, but he's covered it just enough with glazes and stuff that it's not overwhelming. So in this scale, you can really work with your airbrush a lot more in a very careful fashion, uh, where you can actually go in and after you set all this stuff, you can go in and glaze softly and subtly with your airbrush just a little to smooth all of this out. And that's actually the number one thing that jumped out at me. 
Um, I would push the highlights up. We need to focus. So we're going to do gold on this scale. There's got to be other reflective colors in it as well. You also want to have pronounced light catches because in this scale, gold is going to have pronounced light catches. Okay. Um, where the light like hits and goes pure white. Um, and that really needs to be in place on the gold that's in here. Overall, this guy looks really good. Um, I like it, but that's that would those would be my recommendation pieces for you to help you out. All right, next up, Matt. Um, feedback on this 54 millimeter demon's skin. Yeah, so again, we need to continue pushing the contrast both of hue and value. We're not doing enough volumetric highlighting. We're not pushing it enough, like around the volumes of the arms where I really notice it. So if you go back and look at Alexander's piece, it's a it's really is a master study in the skin, right? And how he's chosen to tackle the individual volumes of the musculature. Um, and but there's just not enough of that. Like I like the variation of hue you did coming into the center with this being more gray. I'm okay with that. But then we've still got to take each color and it has to it has to have its own then progression it's going through right i would also say more hue because it working in some other soft subtle tones like some soft reds uh or magentas or purples will help it feel more like skin and something that's alive i understand it's a weird demon creature so it's you know made of who knows what but nonetheless we we tend to recognize that more as skin when we see those tones at play so there you go matt hope that helps all right jordy um Big this says it's a big improvement compared to his past posts. Past posts at a loss and not to finish the purple skin. Yeah, I mean, so let's talk about how we take purple skin. So we it is very flat. We need to just incorporate flesh tone. Go back and watch my exploring colors purple video and uh, look at how I use flesh tone in there and travel through magenta because that's what it is. You just need to grab yourself some Caucasian flesh tone and start building up those highlights into the purple. Nice, soft, subtle layers. Build it up there. The skin will still feel very purple, but that flesh tone will make it feel like it's actually flesh. Okay? So that's my advice. All right, next up, Nick. Uh, okay. So Nick brings us uh, display quality on this, mostly focused on the TMM and the basing. So looking for feedback on that. Sure. Um, think the basing looks cool. Uh, it's pretty great. I could see uh, your tufts just look stuck on. Just previous things I've said, every element needs to be painted, including tufts, meaning they have to have wash stuck in them, should be dry brush. They should have elements of the earth around them into them. Pigments, like stuff, nature gets all up in each other's business. It doesn't stay separated like that. I don't have just like dirt and then a plant that looks completely separate from the dirt that it's next to, right? Some of the dirt is up in the plant because it got windy, it rained, water soaked up, and then the water dried, and then it left some of the residue on the plant. And so on and so on and so forth, right? Okay, so so like that's the thing. Love the splashing water. Think that totally works. Think it looks great, as a matter of fact. Beautiful. Yeah, that's that's gorgeous. I have no feedback on that. Um, we could work a little bit more greens and stuff like that into the rock. Um, if there's that much water hitting this rock, it's going to be full of life. Like it's going to have lichen and moss and all sorts of crap like that on it. Like if you've ever been near any kind of ocean or lake and seen rocks that are on the edge of it, they are not flat colored, right? They are mossy green, brown, purples everywhere. Now, as to the uh, TMM work, as far as how we're capturing the lights and shadows, good. I think it's very good. It's always hard to evaluate in a picture with TMM. You really have to hold it in your hand. Uh, but I think we're mostly in the right area. Um, I think what I would push you on is working on some more interference colors in your TMM, soft glazes of subtle colors. So I'll give you an easy example. Her leg here is facing out to a clearly blue water. Why is there no blue interference color right here in there where it's picking up some of the reflection of the blue water? Right? So those are the things that really jump out at me, Nick. But overall, she looks great. So I uh, hope that helps. Okay, Silas. Um, feedback on his Pox Walker test piece. Particularly keen for feedback on the skin. Um, sure. So I think when I looked at the skin of this guy, I mean, he's super gross, no doubt. But we just need to, and it's, it's not bad. I think your pustules and all that stuff look fine. I think we just need to focus on probably bringing out some more highlights and shadows. So what really lacks here is just the contrast. Bringing the skin up into more, mix some yellow into a sort of standard Caucasian tone or a light Caucasian flesh or something like that and use that as your highlight tone. And then mix some purples into your 
greens and use that as more of a shadow tone to to reinforce the volumes of the mini and i think you'll really have something uh looking great there so that would be my advice okay next up robin uh love feedback on the flesh and in particular how the tonal contrast is sure um it's not enough i mean that's the short answer like we can tell through this picture right the head it's okay this should be a little softer coming into there on that edge like you know but but like the muscle structure you can tell right here when i look at this picture when i black and white this out this is all one color and this is all one color there's a super slight variation right and that's it and that's that's your sign right there um you know the fur and the bone like in general my number one piece of advice for this is there is not enough tonal variation more contrast throughout the piece pushing higher highs and lower lows okay all right tate um first time doing this uh i'm doing an army of these guys high tabletop uh to display sure okay so my answer is much as you've heard me say many times again we need more contrast the bone is super flat i need a lot more use of low tones of browns go watch and go back and watch my how to paint bone video and you'll see all the different things you could do and how i create contrast in bone it's an old video but one i really stand behind especially for this kind of bone. Um, it's one of those few times I really, I think, made an old video that I really liked. Um, so go back and watch that. I think it was in like the 40s or something. It was pretty pretty long ago. Um, but I still stand behind the technique. And, and that's the problem. The bone here is like way too flat. Uh, it's the number one thing. Also, when it comes to things like the basing, the base is super boring. It's just brown, mucky mud. You know, life, color, different tones, all the sorts of things I've said. More variation of everything on the base because uh, right now it looks super boring so okay next up cole uh happy with his quality for his troops looking for advice on how to take this paint job for the next level for incoming characters sure um yeah so if this is fine for your troops how do we how do we take a paint scheme and elevate it so actually miniac had a really nice video on this recently on elevating um uh, an existing paint scheme for uh characters and I, he actually used almost the same trick of uh clear red over metal so i would definitely go recommend cole you watch miniac's video on this if you haven't already because you know you see exactly how he did it but the answer is we're going to push the contrast farther so when you have the the red over the metal you're going to create more contrast on the initial metals maybe you can do a little more battle damage or something like that on him maybe you put in some more bright edges on that guy when it comes to the golds, we're going to do a lot more work of integrating colors and tones into the golds and pushing the highlights up, that kind of thing. Effectively, the short answer to your question is you do the same but more, right? So more contrast, more detail, more attention to the overall structure of the piece. That's like really the simplest answer I can give. I would also put in more effort into the basing because right now the basing on these guys is super boring. So if I was, I mean, I don't mean that in an insulting way. I just mean like, you've got graystone i've talked about graystone about 10 times in this video already so i'm not going to do it again but you know more uh making up the making the base have a lot more life can also make a character stand out so there you go all right next up richard um one thing you did pretty good and one thing to push further sure so the well first of all it's only your 10th mini so the number one thing you should do to continue improving is paint about a thousand more minis okay like, I wouldn't expect anything to be good of your 10th thing. Okay. I mean, that's just, that's just, we need to set our expectations accordingly here, right? Um, now, that being said, I like the color composition you've picked for this guy of the blue going out of the purple. You've clearly got a good eye for color and you're, you know, working with that well. Okay. Uh, I like the light blue, like sort of inner light thing that you're doing there. That's cool. Where we need to work is really on the contrast, right? On if we're going to do this, Contrast and setting up the volumetric structure of the muscles and the arms and the legs, making sure the bone has the right contrast. Again, see previous thing I just said five minutes ago on like having the bone be, you know, actually have a contrast. I have a video on that. And uh, that would be my main thing I'd tell you to work on because he himself, like color compositionally, he's fine. But from a contrast perspective, he's rather flat. Like he has these bright inner lights and then the tops are just one color. Right. So that's where we need to go. But keep painting. All right, Jeff. First time tried painting non-Caucasian skin tone. Not sure if it's highlighted properly. Feels like the highlight should still be pretty high, but I was afraid it would make the skin tone not look as dark as I wanted. 
Sure. Um, so the answer is, let's go over here to the, no, sorry, back one. Yeah, this one. You're correct. It's not as high as it could be. Um, and, you know, the answer there is, by the way, just look at, again, let real life guide you, right? So um, if, you know, there's a thousand pictures of uh, African-American skin tones, and, you know, various sort of darker skin tones out there in the world, and look at the variation in those skin tones that exist. Look at, you know, real human beings and understand how bright that skin is reflecting, especially under light and stuff like that. And you can push to there because, yes, the answer is there's not enough contrast in it. I mean, it's a short and simple answer, right? But um, if you look under sort of one of the best ways to do this is just look for people on magazine covers um, or, or like those kinds of photo shoots, those types of things, because they set up very perfect lighting and then will often, uh, you know, do additional touch ups. Um, some of that can be not great, like when they lighten people's skin, which is gross. But um, but when they're uh, but under like ideal lighting conditions, what they're often doing is just making sure in Photoshop that the lights properly balanced, getting rid of like hot spots where somebody might have caught a reflection or something or something like that. Normal touch ups. So they're setting up like an ideal situation where the skin is showing in this sort of very perfect, ambient, diffuse, bright light, right? And that gives you a really good guide for what somebody being just out in the sun under like no direct lighting would feel like, which is kind of what you want under this this person from the hunt, right? Uh, so that's where I would direct your attention and say, yes, your instincts were correct. And as I always say in this, if your instinct is that it's not, I'm never going to tell you otherwise. When you hear that voice in your head saying, I think this thing is wrong, and then you come to me and ask for permission for it to be right, I'm not going to give it. It's wrong. You knew it was wrong. That's why you asked me. It's wrong. There you go. Okay, so next up, Florian. Um... Uh, first submission here, start using glazing for the first time. So looking for feedback on your glazing, the red cloak, the crystals, and the hair. Um, sure. So I think the cloak is relatively fine. You, it's a little too... Um, your your white spots are a little too small. That's reflecting like metal. They need to be more broad and diffuse. You have the right amount of contrast. They just need to be slightly broader highlights. Okay. Um, now, as to the crystal, again, you're... Where I actually see the challenges isn't with your glazing. And again, you don't really, like your your hair, this is not a great fig. Let me just say that. Like this thing is the, a super soft sculpt. Um, like I can barely tell where her hand ends and the skin begins. So my one of my recommendations would be the best way to improve your painting is to actually like get some nice, sharp, clean figs. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to go buy GW stuff. But there are plenty of great alternative uh, fig producers out there that are producing like really crisp, nice quality sculpts so don't don't settle for something like soft um now that being said i think your glazing is clearly you're, you're learning it because like the red looks really smooth until we get to our highest highlight and again that's the highest highlights are always the toughest to, to work with um the cloak is not so you need to go back and watch my like how to um you need to go back and watch like my how to achieve smooth blends video or working with blue or purple or black as i've done many videos on that and that will show you how to do that. With the hair, go back and watch my hair videos because I have lots of videos. The key with doing hair is not the glazes. That's the easy part. It's creating the individual texture of the thing. I think the crystals work really well. I think you nailed those. But you've got to get your lines sharper, and that has to do with smooth flowing paint. So go watch my how to paint sharp thin lines video. And uh, and that stuff will guide you through. But overall, um, you know, I can tell you, like you said, you're starting out. So you're, you're certainly, uh, as a newer painter, you're, you're coming along well, and it's a lot of question of just refinement and more practice now, deliberate practice. All right, Sean, first time posting the PMP, hoping for feedback on weathering and color balance. Um, yeah, so my answer is color balance-wise, you don't really have anything to worry about here because the dude's all red. So, I mean, you have a couple spots of green or whatever that you have. You don't really have to worry about color balance on Space Marines when you're using all one tone and then a secondary tone of black, which isn't actually anything. And the green's too small to actually draw any attention. So no, the fluorescent green on the eyes and little buttons, yeah, it's fine. And your little other colors here are so desaturated as to not matter. They're all basically neutral. Like everything but the red in this piece and the little tiny green things, it's just might as well be a neutral tone. So overall, I think that works fine. Battle damage, yeah, I like it. I think it looks good. You kept it very minimal. 
Uh, I mean, like, this guy's heavily battle damage, but when I, when I say minimal, I mean you kept it, like, to small scratches, you colored them well, you didn't go overboard, you have them nice, they're varied in their application as to where they are. Um, yeah, I feel like that, that all sells for me. Um, nice little matches of scratch, ma uh, mix of hashes, scratches, and dots. Some slightly bigger ones. Um, careful up here with a scratch like this, where you put red back over your freehand, you gotta go in and make sure you get that red all the way red. Like red is a very transparent color. You put a layer over it. You said, oh, well, this is kind of pink because it's over the bone, but that's fine. It's not fine. It needs to look like the same red that this is. Okay, this can't be pink when this is red if this is getting scratched away to reveal this. You have to cover the thing completely. Okay. But overall, yeah, good stuff, man. Uh, I like it. All right, Nick. Been working on a set of vaporware-inspired terrain. Would love to hear some feedback on the glitchiness of the statue in particular. <clears throat> I saw this online. Uh, I thought it was super cool. Does it sell for me? Yes. I don't know that I have any good feedback to give you here. Um, this is a very experimental thing. This is a very artistic thing you're going for. This isn't like, hey, I'm trying to paint a, a smooth blend. Is it smooth? Like, you're going for something artistic here and an interpretation of a thing. And if you're asking me, does it sell, in my opinion? Yes, it does. Love it. Love the choice of the green in between. Looks like a glitchy computer goo inside the, the thing. So, yeah, I think that works. Um, when you get down here to, like, the brick and stuff, you may want to smooth some of those blends out a little bit. That kind of thing. Um, but other than that, no, I think this is awesome. I love all your Synthwave train stuff. I saw you sharing it online. I thought it looked great, Nick. Okay. Uh... Mga. Where's it being? All right. MM. Let's call you MM. Um, painting in a strong environmental light style. Would you please point out how you can improve it? Yeah, so this is great. Um, I looked at this guy earlier when I was reviewing all these, and I really thought you did a great job. Um, it's nice. It's soft. It's subtle. Uh, so here's the one thing I would tell you. We need to shrink out a little bit of the yellow, push that some of this a little more into the orange. The yellow should really be kind of refined to like the edges and some of the lower parts. Maybe we could have a little bit more here. Um, the skull should have a deeper shadow on this side. And then up here on the tops, we shouldn't have any yellow. This is too far away to be capturing the the super bright pure reflection. Maybe you've got a single dot of yellow, like, I mean, teeny tiny dot, but I would honestly keep it mostly to a, an orangish hue and then fade it up. Um, a little bit more of a fade of some softer, subtle orange coming up a few of these very lightly, very lightly, could be uh, the thing that I would push it farther. But overall, I think this is really fantastic. Uh, I don't know what this guy is. Some kind of Manser, probably, because I think that's what all these guys are named now. Um, something Manser. And, uh, but yeah, I think it, it came out really well. So, great job. Nice, minimal effect. It lands, it punches, it hits. So, yeah, there you go. All right, Sam. Um, diorama inspired by the season, uh, alongside General... Uh, CNC on the minis, the overall composition, the basing elements. So, see previous things I've said about too much space. Again, we have too much space. You don't need this much space when it comes to a uh, a diorama. These guys could be shrunk down. Like, boop, boop, pull that in. Um, we've got way too much negative space here. It kind of doesn't need to be here. Uh, the Now, as to the composition itself, again, when you're going to put this much like tufts and stuff down, paint them. Get in there, get an airbrush, make some shadows, make some highlights, do some dry brushing. Like, paint your foliage. Make it be something. Because as it stands right now, it looks like these two guys... These two guys look like they exist in a different universe than what everything around them is. Because it's clearly not painted. Right? Uh, now, as to the figures themselves, I mean, the same story I've given many times is going to be true with both of them. Uh, they need more contrast. Especially on, like, the metals and things like that is where it really jumps out at me on the little goblin... Um, the wood and things like that on him. Um, now, the the this guy's not... He's the better of the two, um, but we could push things like some of the highlights up and the volumetric highlighting on the tree man more. And, uh, like, the pieces that are... The parts that are most successful to me are this leg piece here. I really like how far you push that, the texturing. I think that looks freaking great. Um, but then I want to see more of that in some of these upper areas here where I don't feel like we caught that same transition as well. Um, also bringing down some of the shadows and contrast on his little green 
areas here so that that stands out more and appears more as a halo because the area near his head would be darker will help his head pop out as being lighter. That would be the other thing I would say. So, hope that helps, Sam. Okay, next up, Philip. A lot of dioramas this month. Uh, one about the color scheme for the Night Haunt Banshee. Uh, okay, sure. And then wet blending and OSL. Sure. So, um, same story. This image you took here is actually all I needed of this scene. Probably even less, right? The fact that you could still tell me, look at this. Do I still have this whole scene? Yes. Then I don't need all of this space. That's the scene. And I would cut it at an angle, too. Like, I would have had it. You knew it when you took the picture that this is the angle you wanted to tell the story, and yet you set the diorama up to not be on the angle. Okay? This should have been the angle that you set it all up at, and it should have been this much space. And this picture, you knew it when you took the picture, subconsciously. So, now, as to the Magenta Banshee, yeah, I think it works fine. It works great, as a matter of fact. I mean, we need to smooth out some of these blends up here, stuff like that, but, you know, she looks good. Um, the OSL on her is fine. It's way too intense. It needs to be softer. Again, the you can't use the same intensity of color at, on the light as well as the thing it reflects, right? Like, in general, this would actually be stronger if there was an OSL. Because you have candles showing light. Like, the candle light doesn't work at all. Because candles don't cast yellow globs out. Like, that's not how candlelight works. Um, candlelight casts a soft orange-yellow, primarily orange, glow onto things, right? Like, when I say orange, I don't mean, like, an orange, okay? I mean, it needs to be orange-yellow. And there's, there's, like I said, there's this spectrum we recognize these incandescent flames of casting light in. And it's not yellow globs. Okay. And moreover, the whole rest of this scene in no way tells me these candles should be casting light. This is bright. This is bright. This stuff's bright. All this stuff is real brightly highlighted and lit. These candles do not look like they're here. If this was all darkened, if you had taken a bunch of like black pigment or darker tones and darkened all this out except for the scene itself, then maybe I and, and made real deep shadows down here... Like, you cannot strike a match without creating a shadow, right? So this is, again, see earlier things I said on OSL. Like, it's really tricky. You're trying to jump into overdrive, right? Um, and the scene would work just as well without, you know, trying to really do the OSL. Um, so the magenta works better than the, than, the, than the candles because the magenta has no real-life equivalent that I can match it to. And she's obviously super intense, the magenta should still be softer. I shouldn't, it should be that. It looks like she came out and spray painted the thing, right? Which, so it, it needs to be a softer glaze where I can still see some of the underlying tone having an effect. But it works. The The yellow just shouldn't cast anything in that kind of tone right there. So there you go. Hope that helps. All right, Carl. Uh, new thing I tried using FW inks for the main body, looking for some advice on... Tonal variation, I think it's mostly two and three. Uh, but when I tried to lighten the color, I went back the other way. Okay, so, again, if you come to me and say, I think I didn't do it, I think that this is a problem, listen to your listen to your heart, okay? Uh, it's talking to you. Um, the, the key is you're absolutely right, and the answer is don't add white. Like, this lizard shouldn't have white near his highlights anywhere, okay? You should be using uh, flesh tones or uh, maybe an ice yellow or even just a, a sort of intense yellow as the highlight. And the shade should be integrating purples and stuff like that because you're absolutely right. He has too much, like, twos and threes, very little four and five at all, and he's missing one, okay? You knew it before you came to me. And so um, in a couple weeks, I've got a video coming out about I don't know if it's a couple weeks. Sometime in the next couple weeks. Maybe next week. I don't know. I have a video coming out about universal highlights. I would recommend you to watch that video um, because it'll give you a lot more feeling on, on kind of how to do that. In general, just don't use white as a highlight. White should never be... I shouldn't say never. White is often not a great highlight color. <laughs> never strong. But white is often a bad highlight color um, because it's just going to make things look unreal. Um, because lights are very, very... Light is very rarely dead white. All right. 
Duarte, uh, thanks in advance for some tips. Going for a black, gray, white skin color to contrast with the blood, red, and glowing eyes. What can be improved? Okay. And then OSL. More OSL. Boy, oh boy. Um, yeah, I mean, the so let's talk about the eye glow in a second. Um, with the skin tone, it's fine if you want to have that ashy skin tone. You still should be using a color. Never use gray when you can use a green gray or a blue gray or a brown gray or a whatever, red gray, right? Like black, white, and gray, and i.e. a mix of black and white, are the most boring colors visually. They do nothing. They communicate nothing. They are the absence of visual information, okay? So in general, if you're going to do that, what you want to do is you want to have color integrated in subtle hues. So you can have him be black to white in this gray tone, but still integrate colors like soft purples or greens or whatever, or browns or something. And it will just make it way more visually interesting. The red doesn't pop out enough because the red is just blood, right? It's just, it's just blood. Like if we were going to do it, we needed more stippling, like how I go back and watch my blood splatter video. It needed to feel more like that, right? So there was more, uh, more variation happening there in, into the blood where some of the blood was dry and something like that, okay? Now, as to the OSL, the problem is, yes, we don't have any darkness. So we've got one and then two and then that's it, right? So it remember, same thing as always with glowing eyes, pinprick of light, the soft one, the soft glow around it, two, a dark ring, three, and then the soft glow on the exposed areas, a soft two. Okay? So, there you go. All right, so, uh, these are actually recorded after because I realized when I reloaded the page, people had thrown in some extras at the end. So, at any rate, here we go. Um, so, first up, uh, Des, uh, where can we improve? Really tried to flex on the weathering. Um, so when I'm looking at them, I mean, if you're like, I'll say as far as tabletop goes, they're fine. Overall, what we need is things I've talked about a lot of times, Des, which is contrast on stuff like the metals, contrast overall. The yellow's okay, but like things like the metals, the swords, um, all those things just need to be pushed up as far as contrast goes. So the reds, all those things look kind of flat. So that's what I'll say, Des. Okay, Beholder from Chris, uh, going for tabletop quality. Uh, he says, uh, if you're going to improve it, where would you get your best bang for your buck improvement wise? Um, probably the, uh, eyes. So I talked earlier about eyes, um, adding and buffing up your eye game is usually the best part, but also just variation across the skin tone. He's very uniform. Like the ball itself has no tonal variation to it. So picking out those kinds of elements, the teeth look very flat. So just increasing the tonal variation, the contrast, I think is how I would go, Chris. Okay. So, hope that helps. Okay, next up, uh, Xavier. Um, first time I try to do more in a base like a diorama. Uh, yeah, so again, when you're going to do bases like this, um, I, you know, like the idea. Super cool. Um, what I'll say with it is, like, it does look like he's running from the guy. One, make sure you cut it sort of to size so, like, it's worth slicing off the edge there so it lives in the universe of the thing. Um, two, um, when you've got the base like this, make sure you you it's just brown earth so as i've said many times earth isn't just brown we could create a little light around him like he's glowing and dark and everything else we could have some different textures and colors um just more stuff around to make it look like we're using the space in a more interesting way okay uh next up jared a uh, quick last minute contribution first bust proper non-metallic attempts um sure so the non-metallic in scale, like I mentioned earlier on the other Space Marine bust of this size, um, we've got to push the, the contrast and the edges and the light up a little harder on sort of the blues to make them pop a little more in this scale. Um, we, you've really got to focus on smoothness when it comes to this scale. So it's a lot more like glazing to bring everything together. As far as the gold goes, much the same thing I talked about with the last one is true here. Um, you know, color integration of reflections around, smoothing it out, and having those extreme light pops. Um, so look at what I said for saying, and much the same feedback also applies here. Uh, next up, uh, John. Uh, so he uh, says he tried to push the contrast on this guy and do some weathering. Uh, liked the contrast, but not so enthused about the weathering. 
Okay. Uh, so I do think we're pushing the contrast farther. We need to smooth out some of it, like some of our edges aren't quite as smooth. It's a little hard to tell because we've got a little bit of a shrunk down image here. I think for the most part, your contrast is in the right place. <clears throat> um, the purple feels like it could go a little farther. Um, the weathering, I think, looks fine. As you said, the sculpt isn't quite as sharp as you'd like. So I don't see a huge problem with that. Uh, but yes, I think we could probably, like, the weathering doesn't feel incredibly organic. And it probably has to do with just the way it's being chipped and the size and the shape of this thing. Some more smaller hashes, scratches, or dots, like just little touches, I think would, would like little small areas of teeny tiny stipples with an ultra sharp brush, I think would help sell the image there, John. So hope that helps. All right, finally, Mart, um, some critique on the cloak, bow, and base, the miniature in general. So everything. Uh, well, it's very easy because I have one piece of feedback for you, which is more or less in line with everything I've said so far. It is a very soft sculpt, but in general, contrast and cleanliness is going to be your main thing we want to be working on here, John or Mart, sorry. Uh, because, again, we don't have near enough contrast in this guy. Um, the cloak is probably the closest, but the browns are very flat. Um, and, you know, everything is kind of just... He looks like, I don't know if maybe we covered a little bit, like maybe the primer went on too thick, but like his face looks very round. I don't know if that's the softness of the sculpt or your paint. I can't tell. Um, but just in general, pushing up the contrast, separating the elements, applying the paint more cleanly, like things need to be more separated, need to have more contrast, much what I've said in line in other reviews. All right. So there we go. And with that, that'll bring us to the end of the month. And now I'll go back to the thing I actually recorded earlier which is me saying bye. With that, we come to the end of the reviews for the month. So thank you very much, everybody who submitted fantastic reviews this month. We're going to be continuing them. Um, as a uh, word of warning, when we get to 2021, we're going to start changing up the end of month reviews a little bit, uh, where we're going to make them a little more focused in what we're doing month to month. So I'll have more information on that. Uh, in the coming months. Don't worry, we're still going to continue the reviews. Um, I finally come to a solution that I like that'll let me um, do these without the amount of time these take to do, um, but still be able to give really good feedback and hopefully let me dive more into individual pieces in some cases. So it'll hopefully be the best of all worlds. And uh, and I'm really excited for the what will be the new format. But for next month, for November and December, we're going to continue on as normal. Uh, but I'm warning you in advance now, if you stayed till the end, hi, welcome. Thank you for staying to the end. I appreciate that. Uh, but as always, I thank, want to thank everybody who submitted. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, great stuff this month. Um, thank you to everybody. New people putting out their first submissions. It takes a lot of bravery to do that. So thank you very much. And people who are experienced and have done multiple times, it's wonderful to see the growth. Uh, like I said, if you want to join us, link is down below. Uh, to join the PMP, do make sure to answer the questions. But as always, uh, I very much appreciate you watching this one. And as always, keep offering positive, constructive feedback in the PMP. I do this once a month. All of you who are answering questions, who are helping, who are giving feedback every day, that's being a hero. That's being a great member of the community. Please, please, please keep that up. It is so appreciated. Thank you so much, everybody. See you next time.